Yo, what is going on, Papa Fam? Welcome back to another video on this channel. Today, I am bringing you one of the most underrated, powerful builds I have done on the channel before. Next year's 14, Azure, not just one, not just two, not just three. I think we have four services from Azure today. And everyone kept drilling me about it in the comments. So your boy is only gonna head and use MongoDB today. And then we're gonna be using Mongoose with that alongside it. Clerk for authentication, media stream to go ahead and record from the user's input, their mouth. And we've got loads of good stuff. Server actions, route handlers, caching, web speech API, TypeScript, Tailwind CSS, oh, all of that, all of that good stuff in today's video. So if you're excited right now, go ahead, smash that like button and let me know where you're watching from. I'm about to give you a demonstration of the Google Translate 2.0 clone. Get ready guys. This is a collaboration with Microsoft and Clerk themselves. So huge stuff happening here at the Papa Fam. Check it out guys, Google Translate 2.0, boom. We've got, this is a proper awesome one. Look at that, we've got USA in the house. What's up guys? All right, here we go. We've got the Google Translate clone. Look at this guys. Firstly, you know, I had to do a little homepage. I didn't spend too much time on the homepage, but there you go. We've got a beautiful homepage. We can go ahead and translate. Let's go ahead and translate something right now to German. Say hello world. And I don't even have to hit enter. We're using debounce to go ahead and get this to work. Look, boom. Hello world. And you might be wondering, but Sunny, aren't you just using the Google Translate API? Well, no, I'm actually using Azure's AI Translate service. So lots of powerful stuff behind the scenes that your boy's gonna go ahead and make it easy for you. Oh, that's it. I just saw a flood of users flying in right now. We've got Rwanda, Russia, India. What's good, guys? I can see the Manda station goes shout out, Sunny. Uh, good to see you here, man. What is up? He goes, Are we gonna use are we gonna use the API? Yep. We're gonna be building our own API, so route handlers. I'm gonna be teaching you server actions and all that stuff is gonna be backed up with caching. So yeah, this is this is gonna be a mad build, right? And on top of that, your boy's gone ahead and done something even cooler. So check this out, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just say something like, yo, what is good guys? This is a live test of my Google Translate 2.0 clone and we're gonna see if this works right now. Check this out. I go ahead and click stop and then it's gonna go ahead and pass that to Whisper AI went ahead popped it in my input box and boom just like that we have a live translation out on the screen and i took it even a step further because i don't even like to do things half measures and we even go ahead and we can speak it out so okay one second i need to actually go ahead and let me pop it in my where is it uh here we go all right now you guys should be able to hear that was I to God loot? Okay, okay. Now don't 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 rate me on the the robot's voice. Yeah, I I, I can't determine how good it is at saying this. But you, anyone who's German in the crowd, let me know how this sounds. All right, ready for this? Guys, I saw him live test means Google Translate 2.0 clones, and we were in seven. Ob das jetzt funktioniert. Okay. So there you go, guys. That seems to work. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that. Anyone German here, go ahead, shout me out. All right, but otherwise, guys, loads of cool stuff over here right now. I'm going to show you. All of this is not being loaded the traditional way. This is be using server actions. It's using revalidate tags to go ahead and revalidate the data efficiently. So much cool stuff is happening right now. Solana goes, hey, Sunny, I've been learning a lot of cool AI stuff from you. Oh my God, if you're enjoying the AI stuff, it's about to go wild on this channel. I'm telling you, I've got loads of stuff coming. Look at this. Let's go ahead and delete something right here. Go ahead and delete. Boom. Everything works perfectly. This is all using MongoDB. So yeah, tons and tons of cool tech to go ahead and showcase. I'm going to go ahead and shout you guys out right now because this is absolutely crazy. The chat is popping off. We've got Kenya, Pakistan, Somalia, Estonia, worldwide. <laughs> Look at that. Bangladesh, Nigeria, Kenya, UK, US, Somalia, German. Oh, oh Germany, that's Jay. <laughs> What's that, man? Yeah, and then that's it. Look at that. Someone goes, it sounds good in German. That's it. Okay, we're good. We've got Sahib Singh. Yo, what is up, man? My designer is in the house. Ethiopia, Algeria. Oh, God, guys, this is international. Check the live chat if you're watching the replay right now. And guys, if you are watching this, there's like hundreds of you watching right now. Destroy that like button to push this video up. That's it. I'm, I'm going to just pause here for a second until you destroy that like button like and subscribe and then we're going to go ahead and build it because i put a lot of work into this build and we're going to go ahead and actually teach you all of it right now and of course guys fully mobile responsive so i don't do half measures here everything's responsive and i want to showcase to you guys we even have authentication so look at this guys we're using clerk to go ahead and get things set up let's go ahead and sign out right now we've got protected routes 
So you see, look at the sign in to get translating and boom. Oh, you might have wondering, this ain't how Clerk normally looks. That's because we're using Clerk 2.0. So we're using Clerk Core 2.0. And I'm not even just saying that as a hype word. This is actually their brand new beta Core 2.0. I'm going to go ahead and sign in right now so I can see people smashing that like button. That's what I'm talking about. Alex Thomas, Wales in the house. What is good, dude? Look at this. I'm going to go and log into my account. So we've got Google Authentication powering everything today. And just like that, it loads up your messages. And if you're wondering, those messages are for that specific user. So everything is going to get covered. Now, what I want to mention is before we get started, your boys hooked you up with an unbelievable setup today because everything that I show today is actually for free. So if you go ahead and hit the first link in the description, you're going to reach the Microsoft sign up page. Now, all you need to do is go ahead and pop your name. So go ahead and do the following, pop your email, your name and all that good stuff. Go ahead and put your country in. And then for the company, you can just put your name if you don't have a con uh, company. Go ahead and tick all of this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Actually, I've already Already done this a couple of times so i'm going to click ok and then submit once you've done that you will go ahead and sign up to the form click ok and then you've got the google then you've got sorry google and then you've got the github code repo and you've also got access to my zero to full stack hero course my flagship course where i go ahead and show everything guys this is where you can go ahead and get the co uh, code for today's build so if you click it you'll see we've got all of the code for today's build so i want you to go there right now and then smash the comments right now saying that i have gone ahead and already filled out that form because i want you to get the code for absolutely free so do that and you can go ahead and get the code for absolutely free now before we jump in as well i am covering today's video with a lovely collaboration with the guys over at clerk so we are using clerk to manage all of the the authentication it is by far the simplest authentication i've ever come across i absolutely love clerk you've got all different types 2fa you've got email and sms you've got magic links everything that you could want in an authentication provider these guys just came along and were like yeah got, i got you on that right so they've gone ahead and made it so easy it's absolutely crazy so yeah, lots and lots of stuff. Now, before I dive into the Azure tech stack, I'm going to go ahead and break down the tech stack on today's video, okay? Remember, if you're watching a replay of this, all of this is going to be going, going ahead and timestamped afterwards. So you can go ahead and check that out afterwards, right? So let me go ahead and, oh my God, my pre-workout is absolutely slapping right now. Okay, so that's it. I always do that to a little test. Okay, so we're going to be covering today's build with Next.js 14. So we've got some goodness there. We've got Microsoft in the house. So we've got Microsoft Azure. The whole Azure team, we've working together for ages. And I tell you what, these guys are absolutely awesome in the tools that they provide. We have MongoDB. And guys, the cool thing is, is that we're actually going to be running MongoDB off of the Azure Cosmos DB. So it's actually the Asmos Cosmos DB. So we've actually got the Cosmos DB from Azure. So this is going to be from Azure. And then we're actually running MongoDB on this database so lots of cool stuff happening there and go ahead and make it you know actually you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make this um yofla is my good little screen for this there we go and then what i like to do is draw on the screen so you guys can see so we've got cosmos db we've got lots of good stuff there we've got clerk for the authentication sides of things so we've got clerk and we're actually using the core 2.0 right so the brand new core 2.0 so i'll show you how to go ahead and upgrade to this right there is a few steps that you have to go ahead and do but we're going to actually be touching next.js middleware alongside this so you're going to be able to protect roots do all of that cool stuff and then also alongside all of this i always get the question sunny are you using react yes react is literally the thing that is underneath all of this because obviously next.js 14 is simply a framework for react so i'm going to keep on breaking it down because i heard some of you say "Sunny, you move too fast in these videos so i'm going to go ahead and explain everything now mongo db is actually going to be we're going to use a library called mongoose mongoose will allow us to interact with our database in a more user like manner so it's going to be a lot easier on that front of things right now that that's not all guys it doesn't end just there right your boy's gone above and beyond for this build frank i see you man what is good dude i can see you in the chat popping up always popping up when it counts man good to see you here my arrows are they suck right next js 14 we've got server actions so if you've been wondering how to use them this is the build for you now when i tell you we're going to be using them in such a powerful way today it's crazy i know the build may seem like how can you use all of this in one build but i promise you it's nuts how much we're fitting this build, right? We've got server components. So the majority of the components today are going to be server components with the addition of client components. So I'll show you how to use client components and when to use them, right? So it's very important as to basically when 
do we use them right because sometimes you might be wondering don't i like i don't know when to use it maybe i'll just make everything a client component don't do that learn how to do it the correct way and then you can go ahead and build on things right for react we're even going to go ahead and use the debounce function so if you're wondering how to use the debounce this is going to be pretty cool whoa and mirage already in with the donations what's up man he goes attendance like the build looks sick what's good man the germans sam goes sunny i'm also in the chat my name's sad i see you dude right and then on top of all of this to reduce the number of bugs we've got typescript in the house as well so typescript like like this is mad you're gonna learn all of this in today's build what crazy and on top of all of that guys we've got next.js caching so you're gonna learn about all the different caching rules you're also gonna even learn about root handlers right so you're gonna be able to build your own api endpoints with with next.js root handlers so tons and tons of stuff happening going on right now let me go ahead and mute that and there he comes in otherwise it pops in uh, frank goes really looking forward to clerk saw this off platform of was oh my god frank you haven't you you haven't used clerk clerk is sick we're going to be covering it all today it's mad all right now let's dive into the actual power of today's build microsoft azure right so this is a collab with microsoft azure so lots of cool stuff happening with them but let's dive through the services that we're using today so first off we have the azure open ai service right well actually i'm not sure if we're actually going to be diving into this too much but i have talked about this in tons of my different builds and you can go ahead and check them out yourself but actually the one that i want to talk about more so is the azure ai translator now the Azure AI translator is how I'm going ahead and translating the text that goes into my input field. So if I was to go ahead and type in something like YouTube is awesome, uh, Papa Fam is my team. Let's go. I don't know what I wrote there, but anyway, there you go. <laughs> and then check this out, right? So go ahead and it will debounce it and then it goes ahead and translates it. So all of that is actually happening with the Azure AI Translator, an AI service for real-time document and text translation. So I'm going to show you how to launch your own instance. And remember guys, if you sign up with that link in the description, so the first link in the description, you will go ahead and actually be able to go ahead and get started with Azure and go ahead and get yourself a free 12 months of their most popular services, plus $200 worth of free credit. So like, like, at this point, you're like, yes, use that, right? And also, Clerk 2.0, someone just said, is it free? Yes, it's absolutely free, so you can go ahead and get started with that as well, right? So lots of cool stuff happening. And then, I took it a step further, we go ahead and actually interpret my voice with the OpenAI Whisper model. So in this case, if I was to go ahead and speak into this, so let me go ahead and mute the music right now and just say, for example, like I said, this is a quick test and to see if my translation is working or not. I actually started speaking before, but there we go. Like I said, here, there's a quick test here of my translation working on. But there you go. Anyone who's Spanish, validate that. Let's carry on. Nice. So look at that. So much stuff is happening right now. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then we have Cosmos DB. Now, you might have used this. You might have not. But I always show the same databases. So I thought, let's mix it up a bit. And you guys are always asking for MongoDB. So your boy came through with Cosmos DB. So Cosmos DB on Azure, a scalable platform. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and plug Mongo in. And then I'm even going to show you how to go ahead and navigate your collections and documents inside of your database the easy way okay frank goes the spanish translation is legit wow, that's sick man good to see you all right so we've got mongodb mongoose and like i said you at this point you're probably wondering what the hell is all of this in a build um, this is going to be so hard well firstly all of this is free first link in the description to go ahead and get started secondly if you go if, when you get started with clerk second link in the description all of these links help support the papa fam so i would massively appreciate if you use those links the first one is the most important one the second one is the most important one they are both the most important links ever go ahead and smash them right now sign up and let me know in the comments once you've done so and i want to mention as well guys it's okay if this is a bit intense if this is a bit tricky if this is a bit like you know on the scary side that is why one i will run through everything in today's video for an absolute beginner so you don't need to stress so much honestly it's okay it's supposed to be difficult but if you want to take your skill set to that next level then head over to paparreact.com forward slash course the third link in the description this is at, oh, this is sick jay i see you in the corner right this is our flagship course and i want to go ahead and just scream about this because honestly i can't stress enough how much mentorship changed my life whether it's the gym whether it's coding whatever i do i have a mentor at the forefront of my development and this is what we've gone ahead and built with zero to full stack hero it's not just a course it's the world's best developer community of a thousand students inside this course all we do is teach the latest and greatest and best stuff if you see my streams and you see the energy that we have in these streams imagine what is going on inside the 
of the course, right? Honestly, all we do is constantly level up week on week on week. This is what Zero to Full Stack Hero is about. So go ahead, feel free, check it out. Third link in the description. And if you're from anywhere in the world, you can go ahead and get purchase parity power by checking out if you get this little, you know, icon at the top of the screen. So go ahead, check it out. With that said, guys, I think it's time to go ahead and smash this build. Quick little water break before we do, because that was a huge intro. But yeah, guys, absolutely massive build. Smash that like button before we get started. But right now, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first things first, I'm just going to go ahead and say, let's get started with the build. And I want to show you as well. I forgot to mention this bit as well. So not only does it speak out. So if I go ahead and do this bit right now. Exclamation point commencemus con la construction. So not only does it do that, but we've got the authentication side. Now I want to mention as well, Cluck is so cool. Like when I tell you guys that this is literally one line of code to get that in. It's literally one line of code, right? Once you've got it all set up and everything like that, it's, it's so good. And yes, somebody actually mentioned as well, Shad Cien. We are using Shad Cien today. I completely forgot to mention that. So yes, I'm going to add that to the text that right now. So you can go ahead and feel free to screenshot this if you want to. Shad Cien, I don't know if it's capital. There you go, but Shad Cien. And of course, that means that we are using Tailwind CSS. So Tailwind CSS is in the house as well. So all this goodness you're going to learn right now. Are you ready for this? If you're ready for this, subscribe and destroy that like button. Because I see just as many like you know viewers as likes right now. I want to see that like button go way above. So destroy that like. Frank goes wait that spanish translation it says it build like construction okay you know what let's give it let's give it the benefit of the doubt <laughs> it's, get, it's it's ai it's getting there right so here we go we're gonna go ahead and cover this now at the forefront of all of this like i mentioned before the majority of this is powered by ai and i'm not just saying it because it's a buzzword but literally as your cosmos is scaling you know based on like it's got a very clever ai little side to it you can go ahead and read about it yourself then we've got the ai translator then we've got obviously the open ai whisper model which transcribes our te our speech into text so so much to look forward to let's jump into it let's go guys so first things first boom i'm going to open up a separate screen well i'll show you on this screen actually i'm going to go ahead and type in warp I've got warp, but you can open up, honestly, at this point, um, any terminal or something. I like to go ahead and CD into a separate directory. So let's go ahead and do it right now. CD, documents, builds. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and do MPX. So somebody goes, I can't sign up with my card details, but I'm signing up as disabled. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but feel free to email us at, um, look at this, I need to tell you AI with all these AI builds. Oh my days, 100% man. Um, but feel free to email us at team at papareact.com if you need a little bit of support, right? But here right now, I'm gonna go ahead and type in MPX, create next app, and then I'm gonna change this to Google Translate, oh my God, I actually did, yeah, YouTube clone okay go ahead and hit enter and this will get us set up with a nice little starter template so in this case i'm going to click okay to proceed and then you can go ahead and just all the defaults are completely fine so i'm going to click enter on everything this is awesome guys your energy today is so sick <laughs> jess Sheeran says sunny the best teacher in the world much love from ethiopia appreciate you dude that's what i'm talking about the music as well is banging today so i've been changing up the playlist if you want that link is in the description check it out okay so Alex says, Whisper is a, a bit slow for me, especially speech mag is pretty fast. If you're, okay, so yeah, it really depends. I would say if you've used it three times in a row in a minute, then it actually um, tends to rate limit you. So you have to increase your quota. That might be why it's slow. So not many people know that, but in the beginning, that's why it's actually limiting. Okay, so whilst that, while that's, when that's done, you wanna CD into the Google Translate clone. I've actually got the YouTube clone so call it whatever you want once you're in i'm going to do code full stop to go ahead and bring up my code editor the man was station goes your tour your tutorials are just lit i love that that's my energy that's what we try and do alex goes i love seeing you back on top form sunny thanks for these speedy answers oh i appreciate you dude that is what it's about man i'm full energy i'm back in full swing we're gonna absolutely kill this one all right, so this is our Next.js 14 template. Go to app, page.tsx, and then we're gonna go ahead and spin up our app. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the previous app. I'll probably start it up on something um, a bit different. Oh, actually, okay, I have an idea quickly. Look, oh, it's one there. I have to quickly change one thing. I'll change it afterwards because it's not gonna run on the correct port. Anyway, okay, ignore what I just said. Let's go ahead and start it. So npm run dev, right? Now, with this in mind, Osama goes, hello, Sunny. I, I'm seeing you guys. If you're 
If you want me to shout you out, this is the time because I'm waiting for this to load. All right, so now HTTP localhost 3000, all good. Now what I like to do, guys, is open up a second screen. Let's go ahead and pop this over here, boom. And then I put this on my left, put this on my right, and I usually make it a bit smaller, like so. And let's go ahead and do that. And then we've got localhost, oops, local host 3000 okay there we go so you should get this screen right now okay once you're on this screen command j to hide your terminal command b to hide the sidebar i want you to clean things up so page.tsx is the home directory imagine this is essentially representing the index right uh Milnit says are you reading these yes i am as well as coding so inside the main tag we can delete everything so let's go ahead and get rid of all of that boom h1 say hello world let's go ahead and pop that in now you should see this all good we're going to get rid of this and before we get started with anything, I'm going to make this a lot easier right now for you all. I'm going to go ahead and actually set up ShadCN straight off the bat. So we're going to go to ShadCN.com or it's actually UI.ShadCN.com. And we're simply going to go to the installation panel, Next.js over here. And then you want to go ahead and type in MPX ShadCN like this. Just copy that. It's easier. If your MPX isn't working, by the way, you actually need to go ahead. And I know I saw the comment on the leak thing. It's funny. All right. If it's not working, all you need to do is install no to get it set up so mpx shad tn in that in that latest and then actually what we can do is we can pop this open come on j to pull this up now while one of your servers is running here i want to split terminals on the right hand side i can install things right so what i like to do is this keep this on the left for just inspecting what's going on and then mpx shad tn at latest in it right so go ahead and do that Someone goes, uh, I saw a nice comment. Sonny is in his Luis Suarez prime form. Hey, that's, that's, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that. Awesome stuff. Limit the fire, willing to collaborate in the near future. What is good, dude? Email us at team at Let's go ahead and do this. Boom. And then we've installed all our dependencies. There we go. Right. So that's it for now. And you should see that the background will turn to white. Right. So this is because it modified a couple of the global CSS files, not good, good stuff. Okay. So now we're in a bit of a prime spot to get started. So you want to get rid of that. And you've got hello world in the corner. So this is where I want to be. Right. This is where I want to be in the beginning before we get started with anything. And I want to showcase to you how we can go ahead and get, you know, set up the correct way. So first things first, I'm going to introduce you to Next.js routing. So in Next.js 14 or 13 onwards, the way it went ahead and changed was you have folder based routing. OK, so in this case, we're actually going to have a folder which represents the translate page. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually run up my code on another terminal right now so you guys can see it. Give me one second, because what I have to do is I have to change my local host uh, for a quick second to okay so i'm going to go ahead and open up my demo app on this screen right here and we should be able to see everything on this because i'm going to use it as a reference okay so i'm going to have a home page and then i'm going to click the translate now button and on that translate now button it should take me to our translation page okay so let's go ahead and do that right now so we're going to have a forward slash translate page so how do i have a forward slash translate page well the way you do it is you typically go ahead and do a new folder called translate and then inside of here so this is going to represent oh what have i done no don't do that yeah so inside of here we're going to have another page.tsx so this is the standard way to go ahead and do things and then inside of here i'm going to start my page up by saying rfce and then boom boom and then we're going to call this the translate page right translate page like so now if you're wondering how did he just do that snippet right how the hell did he do that well go to your you know your um extensions type in es7 and the first thing that you will see well it's not really the first one but it's down here i believe yeah it's this one i want you to go ahead and install this one 11 million i swear to god i am like a reason why this gets so many i've told everyone in every video to go ahead and download this so those this guy needs to shout me out at some point because <laughs> i've done you a favor but th that's how you get the snippets right so you want to go ahead and do that also bart mercier hello sonny i'm the granddad 70 you are so great dude what is up awesome to have you in our stream thank you so much for coming and uh yeah spending time here man i appreciate that so at this point, we've created a forward slash translate page. So if I go to forward slash translate, we will see translate page. OK, so now you can see it's as simple as that to get page routing. That's what you got to do. Now I'm going to create a link from the first page, this hello world page, which is just my index page all the way to the translate page. And to do it is fairly straightforward, right? All we're going to do is simply go ahead and type in a link tag. So I'm going to type in a forward slash link and you see we import next from link tag. 
uh, like so. And I'm going to do it like this. I'm just going to type in, uh, let's just say translate now, translate now. And in our link tag, we have a, something called a href and that will go to the page that we want. So translate, there we go, boom. Okay, just like that. Now you can see translate now. So at that point, all you need to do is click it and it will take you to the translate page. So now we have page routing already set up in like two seconds, right? Super easy to go ahead and get working. Um, if you guys are enjoying this right now, again, smash that like button. Already over 100 likes. Let's keep on going. All right, we're going to get to a 500,000 this video. I know it. Car Extra Fragrance is not going to lie, but your videos keep getting better and better. Reason why I subscribed and then check out your course soon. That's what I'm saying, dude. I appreciate that energy. That's what it's about at the Puppet Fam. So good lad. All right, so we've got the translate now happening. So once we're on the translate page, we're going to start doing what I like to do the most, right? So first, if you're wondering how I'm navigating between code files without opening this, I do Command P and then you, you can go ahead and type in, for example, that page and they can see translate page. So there's a quicker way as opposed to doing this. So inside of my translate page, what I'm going to do is firstly, in order to do anything on this build, I really kind of need to get the authentication set up. So we're going to set up clerk. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now, but I'm going to show you a pretty interesting way because we're going to set clerk up and then I'm going to show you how to upgrade it to clerk core 2.0, the brand new beta sort of internal upgrade that they've released. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and show you how to do it. So first things first, second link in the description will take you to this page. Okay, so the second link in the description will take you to this. Okay, now what I need to do is to click, simply click on start building for free. And this again, if you go through that link, it does help me out. So I appreciate you if you do that. Now click on Google uh, or whatever you want to do, just sign in. So in this case, I'm actually, I can't remember what, what account I've signed in with, but let's just do uh, my personal account for now. Okay, now once this is up, we're going to go ahead and see. So in this case, yeah, I've already set up a few things, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new application. Okay, so I'm going to click on create application and we simply need to give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to say Google Translate YouTube Clone. Okay, and this is what I love about Clerk. Now, Clerk really, like when I tell you, I've used so many different ways of authenticating and Clerk came along and just answered every single one of my prayers. They made it so easy to set everything up. And I love this little uh, little coding reference here, but what you can do is all you need to do is simply tack on whatever you want. So if you want to support Facebook, you do that. If you want to support Apple, you can do that. And if you go ahead and support a couple of them, you'll see you even get a nice little change in the UI, right? So all your popular sort of, you know, login providers, they have support for even things like Notion and MetaMask. So any of you crypto lovers out there go check it out right so we're going to simply do email and google for now create application and my favorite thing is it really does make things so much easier now somebody asked next auth versus clerk if i'm totally honest with you clerk through and through so much easier you're going to see just how simple it is right now okay so at this point now we're going to go ahead and add in our environment variables so what i want you to do is copy this code and go back into our code itself and then command b and at the top level right here so at the package json i want you to create a new file and i want to call this one .env.local right now i'm going to go ahead and paste in what i just got went ahead and copied now the reason why i'm not showing you this is because it's going to go ahead and actually you know reveal all my secrets on the screen so i'm going to go ahead and hide that right now so this is going to say secret there we go okay so what you should see now is this so you should have pasted in what you had previously on the screen so copy this and then paste it in here right so i'm going to go ahead and undo so you, my secret goes back in close that now and then we've got our environment variable set up. So .env.local is what you needed to do. And Next.js automatically will import that into our code, okay? Now, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and continue to the Next.js guide because I'm showing you just how easy they make life, right? So once you've done this, we need to install Cluck. So let's go ahead and install Cluck into our project. So let's pop that open, Command J, and simply install the dependencies that we need. Now, to make life easier, always set up your, um, you know your situation or your setup in a nice clean way so you can go ahead and navigate that's better all right so install clerk and then we've already done the environment variables and then we need to add a clerk provider to our application so we typically do this at the top level of our app so inside of our layout folder over here this is essentially the starting point of our application so you can modify your metadata all that good stuff here but what i want to do is actually wrap the entire app with something called clerk provider so just like so boom and then you want to pull it in just like that now that's literally it, 
right at that point you've gone ahead and you've actually believe it or not you've actually wrapped it around with a higher order component which allows any child component including any of our pages now access to inner you know functions that we may want to use right so in this case now we've gone ahead and done that but we need to add something called middleware now middleware essentially captures every single request that comes through our app so when people visit a page that is a request to get a page so if we can intercept every request we can go ahead and basically tack in our authentication and then control the authentication flow so i'm going to show you how to do it now Here's the interesting part, right? So we're using the Clerk 1.0 documentation right now. So I'm, the reason why I'm gonna show you this is because I wanna do this and then I'm gonna change it to Clerk 2.0, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. At the time that you're watching this, it could already be by default 2.0. So just bear that in mind, but I'm gonna show you right now how we can do it. Now, by default, by the way, guys, it, you can actually, um, everything is actually protected by default in the in clerk 1.0 so uh we're going to go ahead and create a middleware so at the top level we're going to do middleware oops middleware dot ts file okay and then we're going to paste this in so you see auth middleware from clerk and then you can see a bunch of different options right now and also you can see public routes and so forth so if i was to now go ahead and refresh my page let's see what happens guys it should automatically take me to a login page amazing that is because by default every single page is protected so if i was to go ahead and go uh, remove this for example now if i visited my local host it should be completely fine however the second i go to a translate page that by default will be protected because it's not part of the public routes okay so in this case now if i continue with my login i will log in and so forth but i don't want to do that just yet i'm going to now show you how to go ahead and change to clerk 2.0 so what i want you to do is go to essentially just google clerk core 2.0 so i'm going to show you from scratch go ahead and do clerk 2.0 you'll get this nice beautiful you know blog post you can go ahead and read it they've got some new ui components some new middleware which is way simpler and they even have an awesome upgrade guide okay so there's a lot more to it you can go ahead and check it out but at the end of the day the better user experience is out of the box from this right so we're going to click on upgrade guide and we're going to go ahead and see this uh addition right here so they've made it very simple for us you can simply go ahead and actually either install it like so or we can do the CLI upgrader. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and firstly install the Next.js beta, right? So let's do that right now. I think, I'm not sure if this command actually does it out of the box, but we're gonna do it separately just to make life super clear, right? So inside of the terminal right now, we're gonna go ahead and do npm install clerk Next.js at beta. Now, again, at the time that you're watching this, clerk 2.0 could be part of the standard stable release. So just worth checking, but if if you've done it correctly you'll see that we should start getting some errors now okay and that's normal because we've changed our packages so this will now be i believe in server for example okay now just to make it super clear inside of package json if you look at my clerk version you will see 5.0 beta 3.35 right so next up we're going to do the cli upgrade helper now i believe this may help out with some of the things so let's just go ahead and run this and see if this can give us a bit of a help so let's go ahead and do that right now and see what happens. Uh, okay to proceed, yes. So let's see if this uh, maybe does any changes or whatnot, but I wanna show you the whole flow, right? So it depends on how big, you know, you might have Cluck already set up inside of your app. So um, there you go, right? So there you go, it's done. Uh, I'm not actually sure fully what that did, but um, in this case, it should catch the disaster and change the infrastructure. Okay, so this typically will go ahead and, you know, run through your code base, I believe okay but the next step is the middleware architecture so we now we basically go ahead and simplify things a lot more right i'll show you this is how you actually apply the protection so now you can protect on a page itself which is a lot easier all right but i'm going to show you how we're going to actually set up our middleware now the middleware is actually a lot simpler than you might think so i'm going to copy this middleware and simply replace mine and notice how we now import from server slightly different change right so we're going to go back into our code and we're simply going to paste this now and you should get rid of all your errors now here is where we can see some examples of some protected routes okay so auth protect and you can protect based on specific roles in this case i don't really want that so i don't really care about that so i'm just going to go ahead and comment now and the same for you know protect dashboard routes to logged in users only and then you can go ahead and match against dashboard so in this case i could by default say let's protect against all of the translate routes and then we can go and say is translate 
is uh, let's just say is um, yeah okay is translate root so in this case now this will protect everything from translate forward right but again i don't even want to show you this way i want to show you how we can do it in the page level as well so i'm going to make it even simpler for everything and in this case as well we're going to have a matcher over here right so again pretty straightforward i actually want to by default allow my um translate page to be um you know public as well so in this case this is what we're going to do for our setup okay so first thing, so now you can go ahead and clear this up. So if you really wanted to, you can go ahead and get rid of all of this, make it super clean and get rid of this as well. And there you go. That's your middleware essentially, right? You don't even need these if you're not going to use them. But I'd like to go ahead and show you in case you want to go ahead and you know protect on a different level. But that's your first step. Now you should be pretty much good to go, right? So any kind of import, you know, that you might have, you may have to change it to Next.js, to Next.js server and so forth, right? Now there are a couple of changes when we actually come to use the application. So I will go ahead and run through those as we're coding today's build, right? But in the meantime, I think we're pretty much good on that front. Right, I think now we can just start using the thing and uh, honestly it's way better in my opinion right because you can protect the page levels do a lot more intricate cool stuff and I think this is the way to go so they're definitely forward moving okay so heading over to page 4 slash translate let's go over to our page right now now if I want to protect this page right how do I go ahead and make it work well first things first let's just see right now is it protected or is it not so if we head over to this page it's not protected I'm not logged in right now but it's letting me hit this page so how do I go ahead and protect this so that only you logged in users can access this page? So at this point, what I do is simple, right? Remember, by default, everything in Next.js 1314 onwards is a server component by default, unless I say use client at the top of the file. So in this case, we will have a server component, which I'm happy with. And then we're going to type in auth and you see I import it from Next auth and I just simply write auth protect. Now guys, this will protect the page. And if I try to access, you know, my local host, forward slash translate so you guys can see right there forward slash translate boom it automatically protects that is how you can do it at the page level okay so absolutely really really nice stuff now bass me and this goes i hope your health got better thank you so much for checking in on that i hope you're enjoying the vlogs and yes your boy is healthy as ever touch wood we're good <laughs> um, but i'm doing well thank you so much all right we're going to go ahead and log in now to test our authentication flow so i'm going to log in and we should see our translation page once i'm past this point so just like that guys in a matter of honestly minutes we have all of our authentication set up with a page protection per route right, right right absolutely powerful stuff and you can protect at the api level the server action level it's just so good right and it's the way that it should be so shout out to clerk and especially the core 2.0 release those guys are smashing it second link in the description to get started remember use that second link it does help the channel it helps out the pop-up fam supports me in doing more of these videos so feel free to go ahead and check that out okay now at this point i want to get the user's id to make sure that they're actually signed in or not right so in this case they will be signed in because they've made it here so how do i get the user's id well i can go ahead and actually get the user's id by doing the following i can destructure it from the auth object so when we're on the server side we can actually go ahead and tap into a bunch of different things now if i go ahead and do control spacebar you can see i get a bunch of things here i get the session the user id the user's you know role and actor and so forth but in this case if i just do this and i say translate page and i pop in the user id we should see that my user id pops up on the screen right so we get assigned a user id accordingly and if i was to go into my dashboard right now on clerk we should see that user User is actually registered so if i go to users on authentication i go to let's type in users here we should see sunny if i click into me we can actually see my user id so 2e8j 2e8j there you go so we have our user authenticated and what's nice about this you can ban users in bassnet you can do a lot of things from the dashboard and you can go ahead and manage their account so really really nice right now how can i go ahead and set up a few things that i want to do such as this how do i get that right that's so nice so let's go ahead and sort this out right now so first things first we're going to go ahead and actually add in our header so i want to go ahead and just pause here for a second and we're going to go ahead and do our header so the way i like to build if you haven't worked with me before go into the top level and i like to draw things out so we've got the html the body and at this level i want to have a header so i want the header to always be rendered out no matter what screen i'm in right in addition you see how here i have a max width constraint applied so let's go ahead and remove that you see how over here i have like a max width constraint right 
and then that is basically going to go ahead and make sure that it doesn't use up the full width it keeps this nice like center element in bay right whereas the header is full screen so what i'm going to do is the header can be its own element but around anything beneath that i'm going to have a max width constraint so i'm going to have a max width max uh width of 6xl and guys we're about to smash 200 likes destroy that like button if you haven't already i appreciate you guys so much that so max width 6xl mx auto and this will go ahead and enforce that you know maximum width and then it will center it by um, automatically assigning the x margins okay now for the header component we're going to go into our components we're going to create a new component called header.tsx boom rfce and now you've got the header right so for the header i'm just going to type in i am a header just to clearly showcase that this works and then we're going to go ahead and pop in the header like so if i go over here and i import it you can see boom like so okay hit save and now you can see i am a header pops up now the, the, doesn't matter what page we're on if i'm on the home page so if i go to my local host see the header is there and if i click on translate no matter what the header will stay there now which is what we want okay so in the header we can go ahead and proceed to build out as we want to so i'm going to keep the header as a server component and here i'm going to go ahead and get the user's id from the authentication right so as you can see now you can start to see where everything tacks in really nicely now this is a server component which means we use the auth object right tiberio brasil goes thanks for the amazing content i appreciate you dude you're absolutely welcome right we're going to make this more seo friendly by telling everything that is you know a header you know block right here now inside the header block i'm going to have a div and this div is going to represent two things we've got the logo on the left hand side and then we've got my user button on the right hand side so here we're going to have essentially a link with a uh, let's just go ahead and build it right now so we're going to have a link this is a next.js link and this is going to simply have the um home button inside of it right so not we're not going to do that we're going to have a href which takes you to the home screen and then inside of here we're going to have a next.js image tag now if you're wondering how next.js image tags work feel free to check out my video where i explain all of this in detail if you just type in sunny sanger next.js image you will go ahead and get that video or if they're watching the replay jay will go ahead and make it pop up somewhere around the screen right now so you can go ahead and check that out right <laughs> jay's like thanks sunny giving me more work so at this point we're gonna have i need to give it a oat a height and a width and then the source the source is most important now fortunately for you guys i've simplified things a little bit right so i've gone ahead and given you a shortened url so you can go ahead and do this and then i'm going to give it a little bit of styling to make sure that the aspect ratio stays the same by doing object contain fix a height of 32 and make it a cursor pointer so if i go ahead and do that now we'll get an error and the reason why we get an error is because next.js image components actually go ahead and do a little bit of image optimization now if i don't whitelist the domain what tends to happen is next.js well, what will happen is next.js will be like whoa 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 i don't trust this image so i'm not going to optimize it because that takes computing power which you're probably paying for after a certain point uh which so we basically need to whitelist certain domains so that way we're basically giving it permission to say okay uh, you are allowed to go ahead and optimize from this domain so we're trusting links.popreact.com by doing Doing the following we simply go to our next config and then if you actually click into this error message it will give you the code that you need so we're going to go ahead and copy that right now pop that in like so and then in here we don't care about the path name or port we're simply going to go ahead and pop in the links like so so this host name that they give you is the one that you can go ahead and do all right so if we're going to pop that in now we've gone ahead and whitelisted that image domain right so uh, tiberio says i love i'm loving the vlogs nice dude yeah the vlogs are a really good way to get personal with us so i'm glad you're enjoying them hit refresh after that and you should see that the image will now load on the screen so there you go google translate boom on the screen great stuff okay so once we've done that i'm going to have a another section now here i'm going to basically do a ternary operator i'm going to say if the user is logged in so if there is an id present then i'm going to log in a div and inside of my div i'm going to have something called the user button now you can see this comes from clerk right now what this essentially is is that all of the things that you saw on that user's button that i showed you previously it's basically that right now if you're not logged in there's an if so this is the if true else and this is the else statement so here i'm going to have a sign in button and this comes again from cluck right now after we sign in i can actually change the sign in or sign up url 
and I want to do the sign up, uh, sign in URL to translate. And are you wondering why is there two, right? After sign up, you may want to send them to like a welcome screen or something. But after we sign in, I want to take them to the translation page. And the cool part is you can change the different mode. So redirect will take them to a full new page to sign in, but I want a modal just to pop up and I just want it to work, right? Now for the user button, what we should see now is let's go ahead and actually go back and we can see look boom we have this nice little user button look at that always oh, even got a little shine to it if i click it just like that guys look all of this out of the box like what just from a simple line of code absolutely crazy it really really does work beautifully well all right so in this case now what i want to do is style it accordingly so i'm going to make the header a flex container so that way everything goes in line we can central er centralize everything i can justify the space between them to push them apart and then I'm going to give a padding on the X axis of eight. So it doesn't touch the side and I'm going to give a border bottom. So you've got a nice little subtle border margin bottom of five. So, you know, anything underneath isn't touching it. So super clean. Okay. And that pretty much does it for that. Right. So in a nutshell, that is doing exactly what we needed. Now, if I go ahead and sign out, what we should see is a sign in button. Boom. That's exactly what we wanted. Everything works great. And look at that. The modal is there. Let's go ahead, but sign back in. And after we sign in, it should take us to the forward translate button. Right. So there we go. Right. So at this point, now we're going to go ahead and see the translate button. Boom. Everything is perfect. Okay. So we've got the header looking great. The next thing that we're going to do is head over to the page. Jay's like, what? How did he just message me privately? And he's chatting on what? I'm joking. I just messaged Jay something on the side. Okay. So at this point, we've got the header dialed in. That looks great. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and actually something is looking a bit bigger than I want it to. I believe what I did in the previous build, well, actually, okay, so I actually started a little bit differently for this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a height of 20, right? And the reason for that is I wanna do, I only kinda want it to be fixed at a certain height. And for this, I'm gonna say flex, and I'm gonna say items should be center, we justify center, and I'm gonna do an overflow hidden. So I'm just gonna center it to make sure, it's basically cropping this image to the dimension I want it. And that's just gonna make things a little bit cleaner. And there you go, looks really nice, okay? So at this point now, we've got the, uh, we can move on to the translate page. Okay, so back at the translate page now, we've got everything set up so the way that we want it. Now we can start building out the app, which is the cool part, right? So first things first, we are going to actually get, I'm gonna throw an error if the user's not logged in for whatever reason. But to be honest, you will come to this this point no matter what. So really this is just a bit of defensive programming, but you won't be able to access this page because the middleware would have stopped you from getting there either way, okay? Now for the translate page, we're not gonna do this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and create two components. The translation, so let me go ahead and mark it out now. We've got the translation form and we're gonna have a translation history, okay? So these are the two components that are gonna make up everything, okay? So translation form and translation history. Translation form is going to be this component right here that you see. So this component right here, this is the translation form. And then we got the translation history. So if we move this up, we've got the translation history down here, which will span down and basically go down here, right? So you basically have to scroll through, you know, X different uh, history points or just see, you know, which language that you're converting from. But the main sort of magic is really happening here inside of our translation form. And this is where essentially we're going to be shooting out something called a server action, okay? So this is essentially where we have server actions being fired off so server actions okay i don't know why i'm screaming it but there you go right so all of that is going to be basically done on stream right now so translation form let's go ahead and build that so translation form like so and we need to obviously create this form so let's go ahead and do that right now so command b inside of our components we're going to go ahead and do translation form.tsx rfc boom and that is such a nice short like shortcut it's crazy Right, so inside the translation form now, this is going to be a client component. Now you're probably wondering, but how do you know if something is a client component? Well, think, think of it this way. I already know this is gonna have input fields, form elements, I'm gonna have some interactivity. In order to have state, in order to have interactive elements, in order to have hooks, you know, anything that requires a degree of interactivity, tends to need to be a client. It has to be a client component because there's no window to mount the state and things like that too. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So use client. And I also wanna show you a little trick, right? So if you do command shift P and then you type in TypeScript, right? So if you do uh, forward slash TypeScript, 
you can see select type script version if you go down to use workspace version this is a game changer it will actually go ahead and tell you so say for example i had another bit of code here equals like this abc and now look at this it says that this needs to be at the top of the file so you get specific rules now which will help you know clarify things just for next year so that's a nice little trick if you didn't know uh, almost about to destroy the 200 likes so keep on going guys so at this point now we've got the translation form looking sick and also if you're watching this um on instagram or you know you're watching afterwards because literally take your phone out right now take a screenshot of this or you know a video of this and then go ahead and tag me at sss sanga in the bottom right hand side of the screen right now you can see my instagram handle tag me i love to see you guys when i'm watching these afterwards right so or if you're watching the replay for that matter right so for the translation form we're going to have a form and this form is basically where all the magic is going to happen so here we're going to have a form and this is going to be where the server action fires off so we're going to go ahead and you know, do a bunch of things with this form which i will get set up in a second but more interestingly enough i actually want to go ahead and get all of the different languages that i can translate from and in order to do that what we need to do is if i go back to my page what I'm going to show you right now, if, uh, sorry, I'm just checking something. So if I go back to my page here, so first things first, I'm going to import that, right? Now, secondly, I need to actually make a call to a endpoint. Now, there is an endpoint. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. So this endpoint right here, let's call it the languages endpoint is from Microsoft. So if we go ahead and pop this in like so, boom, it's from Microsoft and this languages endpoint will basically give us all of the languages. So if I click into it right now, these are all of the languages which the AI translate from Azure support. So you can see essentially it gives me all of the languages, quite a lot as well, right? So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and take all of these translations and you've even got different types of, you know, information about each one. So you can go ahead and really feel free to check this out yourself. But we're interested in this translation at the top. So I need to make a fetch call to this. I'm going to show you how to cache it. So I don't want this update every single time. I want to basically just cache this request every day, essentially, right? So what we do is we have the URL here. Now I'm going to go ahead and say const response equals await. And what I can do is I can make this an asynchronous function because it is a server component. So we're going to go ahead and say await fetch languages endpoint. And then what I'm going to do is in the second argument, I'm going to provide a next tag, right? So in this case, next. And then what we do is we pass something called a revalidate tag. And what this means is you essentially can pass it a bit of time. So I'm going to say every 60 seconds, every 60 minutes, so this is one hour for 24 hours. So basically this means to refresh. So basically cache the results for 24 hours and then refresh so essentially that's what's going to happen here right so every 24 hours this call will get made no matter what even if you had a million users on your website it's only going to call that you know request once uh every 24 hours and everyone's going to get served the cached version of it okay so after this we can go ahead and pass the languages by saying const language equals await response.json languages sorry and then what i actually want to do here is i'm going to go ahead and basically i've already defined a typescript definition for the language right so in this case i've gone ahead and created a type and in this case it's translation so it's just an object of translations and each key is simply going to be a string and then we've got the name native name and the direction of the text so left to right or right to left right so this is going to be the translation language so what i can now do is i can say as translation languages and this means that now i have a correctly typed um setup right so in this case i've got the languages and what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply pass my languages into it like so okay so into the translation form so inside my translation form now i need to accept the languages as props so i'm going to simply go ahead and type in languages and then over here i can type in languages translation languages import that from my previous page and obviously you can refactor that however you wish you know whatever you decide to do and now what we're going to do is we're going to have a drop down. So if you see here, guys, I forgot to show you guys, this is actually the language detection. And look at this. If we connect, we even have auto detection. So it will detect the language. So if I was to simply pop in, for example, a Spanish and let me type in English here. So if I type in Spanish here, look at this, it will even go ahead and oh, OK. I'm, oh, OK. I messed something up. So on this one, I haven't changed my endpoint to be um, Okay, so I'm, I screwed this all up because I'm using Clark right now and I've changed from Locos 3001 and so forth, but we'll fix that, okay? But I'll show you guys how that works essentially afterwards. Um, what I actually want to do though is quickly log in to make sure this works. 
It's because I'm doing localhost 3000, 3001. I'm just confusing the hell out of this. So if I go ahead and do this right now, I don't know if this is going to work or it's going to freak out, but I think it will work. There we go. Okay. So I did to Spanish. Let's do it to English and translate again. Now what you'll see is, look, let's start with construction. And it auto detected that it was Spanish, right? So I'm even going to show you how to do that, right? Now let me know if you're coding along with me. And as I mentioned before, I'm moving at quite a good speed here. So if you are finding this a little bit tricky, remember the first link in the description will take you to this Microsoft page where you can go ahead and get the code for today's build. Everything that I'm talking about right now is already coded out here. And you can go ahead and use that as a reference, right? So that's actually going to help you guys massively to go ahead and get things up and running, okay? Um, I don't know what Jay's talking about, history time sounds, but yeah. <laughs> in that case, there you go. So in this, now we've got the languages. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can go ahead and get this nice little, you know, drop down like so, okay? So at this point with these, with this nice little drop down, we're going to go ahead and use um, Shad Cien. Okay, so we're going to go over to Shad Cien. Shad Cien, boom. Okay, now, over here, we're going to go down to the select field. And you can see here, we've got different select fields. In fact, what's really cool is if you go to the scrollable one, I think we're using the scrollable one in our demonstration here. Um, you actually get these different little sort of, you know, you see like North America and you get Asia and you get these different sort of subheadings. So what I'm going to do now is actually install this. So MPX Shad CN add select. And essentially, when you're working with Shad CN, you're essentially like copy and pasting by using these commands in. So I'll basically add in a select f uh, component into my code now. Um, so this is actually going to go and install that into my code. So what it's doing is it's going into my components, my UI select, and it's basically just pasting in this code. So you can go ahead and there's full transparency. You can modify it as you wish. And that's really why I like Shad CN as well, because you get full transparency over the code that it goes ahead and pops in, right? Now, I'm going to use not the scroll. I'm going to use a scrollable. So we go to form. I'm going to simply import everything from this. So let's pop that in the top of my code. And then if we look at the different examples here, you can go ahead and do the same thing. Um, what I would recommend here is it probably is easier to be fair if you do it this way. Um, we're not using a theme switcher today. No, a theme switcher I've done in a lot of other builds. I don't think it's that impressive. So I'm going to not do it today. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a select. So what I want you to do is copy the select, right? And we're first going to just pop all of that example into our code. And I'm trying to make it as simple as I can for you to follow. So we go ahead and pop that in right now. Go back to my code translate now. And I need to log in again. Okay. So it's going to keep throwing me out now because I've done, I'm confusing it too much with, uh, let me log in again. So I'm going to try not to log into my 3001 demo. I want to show you this. Okay. So in this case, look, we've got the side time zone now. So this is awesome. DevLogs goes the engines. Hey, oh my God, let's go global pop from a little from Kenya. What is up, dude? Good to see you in the house. So you can see this is an example of how it will go ahead and render out based on this. So all we need to now do is refactor it based on what we need. So select trigger is a bit more easier. We're going to do a select a language. So in this case, select a language like so. Boom. Right. And then for the select content, you can go ahead and make it a bit more down to what we want. So first things first, I'm going to create my own select group here. And this one is going to be a select group where it's going to say select label want us to figure it out. And then we're going to have an auto detection option. And the key is going to be auto and the value is going to be auto. And we're going to use that later on. So you see auto detection. Right. And then after that, for the select group down here, we can go ahead and get rid of everything inside of that. So in this case, now we've got, you know, just auto detection. So you should see just auto detection like so. And what I want you to do then is we're going to create another select group. Okay. With a language select label inside of it. So a language select label. Okay. And over here now for the items, we're going to render through the translations that came back from the language. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to go ahead and say, when we've got an object, um, remember I showed you previously, these, this is how it comes back. It's an object. What we're going to do is we're going to map through it. So we're going to say object dot entries. And then what we do is we give in the language translation. So then we can say language translation and we say dot map. Right. And then what we do is we get the key and value pairs. Okay. Now for the key and value pairs, what we're going to do is implicitly render out something, right? So in this case, we're going to render out the 
select item which is the key and the value and then value.name is what we're going to essentially pop out now all we're doing is essentially popping out these right so there we go if we do that right now and we see i get look at this languages uh languages let's do that you see look africans all this good stuff so in this case if i remember the key is going to be the actual value here so um let's go back and i'll show you so the actual key is going to be uh the key value pairs it'll be this right here so it'll be af am ar and so forth that's actually the the core part that we need um so that will help you guys out a little bit pop fam is crazy today i can see you guys flying Just keep smashing that like button almost at the 200 light mark guys crushing it right so in this point we've got this down that's looking pretty good okay now i'm going to do the exact same thing for a second area afterwards so what i'm going to do is firstly surround this inside of a div so go ahead and cut that go to the bottom div tag boom and above the no below this sorry i'm going to have a text area right now the text area is going to represent this lovely you know text area that we have over here so inside of shad cn go down to text area and we're going to import this component right so really nice little component here come on jay pop it up pop it into our terminal and while that's loading quick little water break okay we're good come on jay to hide it boom we're back and now we've got the text area here so let's go ahead and pop this in so at the top down let's pop it there so come on import text area from there and underneath the select tag we're just simply going to type in text area uh text area sorry and this is a self-closing component and there's a few things that i care about here right so firstly i'm going to style it a little bit so i'm going to say it should have a minimum height of 32 text should be extra large and it should say type your message here right that already looks a bit good uh, i'm going to say the name of this field is going to be input right so we have to give the name of the fields um and after i mean i'll assign the you know state afterwards so we're going to sort of handle that part afterwards but for now that looks okay all right i'm happy with that so now for this div i'm going to copy this entire div and i'm just going to paste it down again all right so i'm going to paste it one more time down below so let's go underneath um da, 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 da. okay underneath here we're gonna paste it down so now we have type your message type your message there we go now the difference is between the first and second the first select field is going to be given a name so let's go ahead and say select and this is because we're going to submit all of this inside of our form so this one's going to be called input language because it's referring to the first input field and the default value here default value is actually going to be auto so it will by default select auto detection okay so if i refresh now it'll say auto detection by default it's tagged onto that and then down and then we've got the name here will be input now for the second field it's going to be name and this one's going to be output language right so output language and then this one's not going to have a default right so it's, it's, as you know we can have a default here i'm going to say default should be spanish so default should be let's just say spanish Okay, so if I do ES, it will find that key in the field and it will say Spanish. There you go. Really nice. And then we've got for the text area here, our name is going to be output. Right. So that makes things a lot cleaner. Right. So with that done now. Oh, look at that. We've got uh, Karachi in the house. What's up? Awesome stuff. Um, so at this point now, we're going to basically have a submit button at the end of this. So outside of this div, we're going to have a submit button. So I'm going to have a div. Uh, I'm going to have a button which is going to simply represent a submit. But what I'm going to show you guys is a. Okay, so I'm going to make it simple for now. I'm going to have a submit. Uh, and it's going to be a type submit. It's important that you, you know, you actually explicitly say this as well for several reasons later on. Uh, and then we're going to basically tack into this afterwards. So if I was to submit now, that will submit the forms. You should see it flickers, right? Because we haven't set up any server action yet. So at this point now, I need to map things to state. So I need to know what the users are basically typed in here, typed in here. So when we submit the form, I can do things with that value. Okay. So I need to prepare a bit of state. So first things first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my state accordingly. So, boom. And remember, if you're finding any of this difficult, you can feel free to hit us up and join us at Zero to Full Stack Hero. I just dropped a link in the chat right now. You can feel free to head over there. I teach all of this at such a granular level. It's unreal. So you'll be a pro in no time. That is the third link in the description. Feel free to check it out, okay? So heading back over to our code. So right now, we're going to have three pieces of state. So firstly, we are a client component. So this allows me to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and say const. I'm going to have an input field and i'm going to have a set input 
Now for this input field, I'm gonna firstly import the state and this essentially will keep track of the state that I have. And I'm also gonna have an output field. So this can be for the output. So input being this one, output being this one. Now, how do I connect it to those fields? Well, let's go to the text area field. And all we do guys is for the input field, we say value equals input. And then when I type in, basically all I will do is I will say, on change right so on change an event is fired off so it's an arrow function all we do is we set the input with e.target value so that is essentially what i type in here so if i hit save and i type in you should see that it works okay now there are ways to do this you can go ahead and use form state management you know react hook form there isn't a way in shad cn to do it but i'm just keeping it very simple for today i've covered that in actually different tutorials as well but in this case this is going to be the simpler version of how to do things okay now for the second text area we're going to go ahead and type in and value output and again the same thing someone says will this app be suitable for a thousand users this app will be suitable for a million users that's how good it is okay so yes you can do it this is a requirement of a college project. Yes, you can, absolutely can do that. So if you want the code for it, remember, first link in the description, fill out that Microsoft form and simply for the company part, just put your name in, get the code is the first link in the description and it will get give you access to all the code. Uh, I wouldn't say copy. I wouldn't say copy if it's for a school project, you know, try and know what you're doing and then, you know, use it accordingly. I'm not trying to influence anyone like that. <laughs> all right, so in this case, we've got input and output being mapped, which is great. Right, uh, and she goes, Bro, you're just insane, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate the love, <laughs> honestly. I appreciate it too much. Okay, so at this point now, we've got the input and output being mapped. So if you type in, it works. So, how do I now go ahead and have it so when I submit, it does what I need it to do? So, we're going to use something called server actions. Okay, now if you don't know what a server action is, simply go ahead and type in server action inside of um you can see more of my debugging seeing so the server actions and mutations we're going to use these right so you can feel free to read about it on next.js but essentially the asynchronous functions that are executed on the server and they make our life so much easier they typically work mostly with form submissions but i'm going to show you anytime you have a data mutation you can use something like a server action so you don't need to create an additional api endpoint and all that kind of palaver um so it's, it's quite a cool way of working in next.js but it just takes a little bit of a thinking switch but I'm going to make it so easy for you. So close everything down here. Boom. And now we're going to go ahead and, oh, that's awesome, man. Someone goes, uh, I'm on developers because Sunny, how's it going? Your tutorials have really gotten me started with Next.js TypeScript and Tailwind. These live streams are pure gold. You're golden, man. Thank you, Jay. Screenshot that. I love the positivity. And thank you for being here, man. All right. So we're going to create a new file called actions and this is where my server actions are going to live and to do a server action fairly straightforward right so we're going to create a translate server action.ts so there you go boom um <laughs> thank you so much right and then in this case we're going to do uh, use server and this is how you define a server action, right? So there's a few ways you can do it inside of a form. It depends if you're on a client or server, but I'm not gonna go too far into it, but doing it in an external file is a relatively simplest way. So at this point we've got translate. And then what we have is two types of signatures. Well, typically, uh, thank you so much because uh, Mento Lay TV TV goes, thank you, Sonny, your videos are helping me out so much. I appreciate you, dude. We're gonna have an asynchronous function. This is gonna be called translate. And then over here, we're gonna have the form data and um, we're going to have a form data like so okay so this is essentially how we do it and then we export i like to export a default translate like so okay so that's essentially the standard for a server action however what we're going to do is we're actually going to tap into something because i want to know when the response comes back from my server action so the way that i do this is inside of my translation form what i'm going to do is use the following bit of code right here so over at the top we're going to say const state form action use form state so we're using something called a use form state hook so i need to firstly get the translate action so i'm going to import that from our actions and then we've got this initial state now the initial state is essentially representation of what the form looks like so the state in our form is going to be input language auto input is going to be blank output language is yes and then the output is accordingly blank now you can see here translate is freaking out it's like what's going on why is this not working because when you use a form state we actually change our signature of our translate function now instead what we do is we get the form data but before it we get something called the previous state and the previous state is actually you know it's where things change up a little bit so the previous state um is actually now going to be uh, let me just go ahead and do this. So the previous state is actually going to be for state, but I need to write this definition. So if we go back to our translation form, 
it's actually inside of our state here so if i go back here so i need to create a typo for this the easiest way is to do type of initial state so if you didn't know that's how you you quickly infer a type off of something like an object so i've got a type here now and inside of here what we can do is we can import the state like so import boom and just like that now what we should see is that this will stop complaining once it returns something back okay so now we can basically start um, handling our translate function so first things first this is a server action and i only want this uh route to be accessible to a logged in user so typically you would have to intercept it check the user's authentication state but with clerk you know it's just easier than that all we got to do is type in auth protect and now we've gone ahead and done that boom all right so Look at this so we've got uh, auth protect like everything works nicely there uh, and in fact you know it would already work at that point but i'm just going to take it a step further with a bit of defensive programming saying get the user id if there's no user id then the user is not found throw an error okay now at this point when we basically go ahead and submit this form well firstly we need to attach this so we've got the translate server action here is where we attach it so we say action equals uh and we actually don't use the transit we use form action here so form action like so okay so boom and now over here how do i get the field so if you think about it, there's four fields there's this there's the input language there's the input output language and the output here right so how do i get access to those inside of my form well the form data comes over but how do i actually access it well it's very simple you basically get the raw form data and you form data dot get and then you use the the uh, key right so a string and so forth so in this case i've got all of my data inside of the rom form data now and now is where i the magic happens so this is actually where i create the endpoint request to go ahead and actually carry out the translation so at this point we need to pause and we need to go to uh, azure and create an instance so in this case we're going to type in azure ai translate right so again first link in the description if you go through that link you will reach this point right here and now once you've got this guys you can sign up for free over here azure.microsoft.com.free and you will get again like i mentioned 12 months free for the most popular services plus 200 dollars worth of uh azure credits you go ahead and check that out um look at this i love the comments right today all right so once you've done that you can go ahead and type in azure ai translator you'll take get through to this screen right here so in this case try ai translator for free so i want you to click on that and we're going to click on start for free and i've already created an account so you guys can feel free to do it at, at your own pace you know however you wish but i'm going to show you how we can set up an instance of the ai translator right now so in this case uh, i'm going to sign in with my team account yes yeah, i'm going to sign in with my team account and uh, for now i'm actually going to go ahead and just quickly log in so if jay if you can give me the code to the login right now that would be much appreciated so uh, that way i can log into my account but in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and prepare myself while i get that from jay so a few things so in my environment file we're going to just go ahead and prepare to make sure that we've got everything so i'm just going to do something a little bit um carefully here so let's just type in abc okay so at this point jay's given me the code so let's quickly log in again so uh i'm gonna hide my screen while i do that if you're not doing 2fa you really should be doing 2fa guys right so at this point now i'm logging into azure talking you through it as it happens so in this case we are at azure looks like you already have an azure account okay i mean use the existing subscription in your account that's fine so let's go to the portal so once you're into your azure account you actually need to set up something called a uh, subscription everything will be attached to your subscription right so you can see i've got loads of stuff going on in my azure services what i need you to do is simply go to translators but if you don't see this simply go ahead and type in translators and you'll see this right here so firstly as well augustine thank you so much he goes hi sunny your videos have been amazing taught about my skills about to be enrolled in a giant company here in nigeria boom that is what i'm talking about well done my dude All right translators let's go ahead and j screenshot that that's awesome right so you see i've already got google translate on, but i'm going to create another translator so let's go ahead and do that right now so i'm going to click on this and then as your subscription i've already created a subscription if you don't you can go ahead and create one for the resource group i'm going to create a new one i'm just going to call this youtube google translate clone 
I'm going to copy this to make life easy. Boom. And then for the region, at this point, you can really do, I think we don't need a specific one here. So we can just type in any East US. There you go. Um, the free tier is already being used, and it therefore will not appear in the drop down. So I've already used a free tier already for this. So I'm just going to use a pay as you go option right here. Oops. Um, so there you go. Boom. Uh, but you guys will get a free tier, right? So I've already used one for now. So. And I can, to be honest with you, I can actually go ahead and pop it into my, I've already got a resource group. So I'm going to make life a bit easier for me and just do that right now. Um, is that going to work or is it not really worth it? Mm, okay, forget that. YouTube, Google Translate, let's do it right now. All right, for you guys, S0, uh, F0 will be there. So I'm going to click review and create. And then we're going to go ahead and click on next. And a lot of you ask all the time, is it free? Yes, when you get started, it'll be absolutely free. Don't worry about it. All right. And then at this point, we're going to click on create, boom. And this will initialize the deployment. So this is essentially all you need to do to get started. Now, while that's happening and it's doing its magic, I need a couple of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare a bunch of stuff now so you guys can go ahead and see what we're doing here. So firstly, neaten things up a little bit, you know, make your life a little bit easier. We're going to have, firstly, Azure text translation. We're going to have Azure text translation key. We're going to have Azure text location. Okay, that's going to be the instance where we deployed. And then we're going to have an Azure API key. We're going to have an Azure endpoint. And we're going to have Azure deployment. All right, so this is going to be for Whisper, essentially. And then we're actually going to have a completions name. Although I don't think I need the completions name. I don't even think I need this today. The deployment name. Okay, but I mean, for now, I'm going to keep it there until I populate it, right? Because I'm not 100% sure if I what I kept and what I didn't keep. In this case, MongoDB uh, username and MongoDB password. So this is essentially what we're going to have today. Uh, and then you're going to have your keys at the end of each one of these. So boom, equals, and for now, I'm just going to ABC, right? So we're going to essentially release um, all of this stuff, okay? So, da, da, da. so at this point now, we're going to go ahead and you see we've got your deployment is complete, right? So we're going to click on go to resource. And then I need you to go to keys and endpoint now. At the keys point, I'm going to copy this text translation and that's the first part. So text translation, boom, that goes there. Okay. The second one is the text translation key. So I want you to copy this text translation key and I'm going to pop it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my screen now, pop it in like so. All right now I want to go ahead and see, can I hide this? Is there any chance I can hide that? No, I can't hide that. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll tell you what I do. I mean, I'm gonna have to be a bit careful about this, but uh, here what I'm gonna do is for the text location is East US, that was the deployment I did. Uh, for the key, I will go ahead and pop it in. My clerk secret key, I'll go ahead and pop it in as well afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, while we're doing all of this, I'm going to actually get a few other things set up in the process, right? So I actually wanted to go ahead and set up my, so we've done the Google Translate section. So you need to put those keys in. The second one that I want to do while we're here is type in, um, I think it's, was it Whisper? No, it's not, it's Azure, um, Jobno API. No, it's not this one. It was actually for the Siri system demo. I'm just double checking to make sure it's not a mistake. Okay. So we need it as your open AI. Yeah. So we're going to click on this. This is the one. Okay. So what I need you to do now is remember North central us is very important here. Right? So if you click on create, I need you to go ahead and create a resource group. So in this case, I've already done it. I'm on YouTube, Google translate, and we're going to create a Azure open AI instance. And for this one, I want to go ahead and do, oops, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to type in, um, let's just type in YouTube, Google translate clone. Boom. And for the pricing tier standard, so it's fine. Uh, this is already in use. I'm just going to type in, um, YouTube, let's type in whisper AI. Now for the region, do not do East us. Okay. The reason being is because you need to actually have North Central US. This is one of the only one of two locations that support the Whisper AI uh, API. So we can click on next. We can click on next. Everything's good. Click on next, and then review and submit. Okay. And once you've done that, we're going to click on create. So give that a second. It will do a little validation step. Click on create. So everything so far looking good. That will do the initialization of this. 
So. Oh, this is nice. I just see, uh, I just saw a nice little viewer. And so in this case, we've got the deployment in progress. So let that do its thing. Okay. So while that's happening, then we'll get the API key, the endpoint, the deployment name, and all that good stuff from that. Okay. So let that do its little magic right now. That won't take too long. I think that'll be done in just a second. And then we're going to go ahead and set everything up because this is honestly the only, look, I wouldn't say even a long part, but it's a tedious part, right? So for the username here, just so now we can prepare ourselves, I'm going to type in username for the password here. I'm just going to type in password, exclamation mark with a capital P, right? So make it a little bit easy. Um, just for now, obviously you can feel free to check, change your username and password. We haven't done any of that just yet. Uh, for some of you are asking, how can I get access to the OpenAI API? Yes, yeah, so if, all you need to do is go to the OpenAI uh, API on Azure and simply you'll click request access. All you do is fill out that form and they'll pretty much give you access very quick. The team are pretty awesome like that. Right, click on go to resource once that's deployed and then you've got keys and endpoints. So at this point we've got the endpoint here. So we've got the, um, the endpoint is the main important part. So boom, I'm gonna go to my text translation key, uh, API key endpoint, so here, this one. And then for the API key, again, the same thing, this one. Okay, so I need you to go ahead and copy that one afterwards to here. So you want to paste that in there. And now for the deployment name. So this is the important part. So we don't actually need the completions. The deployment name is the more important part here. So what I want to do is click on model deployments and click on manage deployments. So what we're going to do now is inside of our Azure Open AI service, we're going to create something called a whisper model. Now this whisper model allows uh, Azure a Open AI service to basically transcribe my speech. So as I talk, it's going to use AI to transcribe that into text. And then that we're eventually going to use that to go ahead and set everything up. So somebody says, what do I do? What do I fill in for the company part on the form? Uh, just simply put your name if you do not have a company, right? That's completely fine. So at this point, we're going to click on create new deployment. And here we're going to click select a model and you should see whisper. If you didn't see whisper, by the way, then you actually deployed to the wrong uh, location. So you have to deploy to North Central. Now, again, I've already done this. So I've already exhausted through my quota. So I've already deployed it once before. So what I'm going to do is use a previous deployment. But all you would need to do, guys, is click on create and then you'll get the deployment here. So I'm going to show you my previous deployment to make it a little bit easier for y'all. All right, so let's go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to show you the one that I'm using is a serious assistant demo. So this was actually one that I used previously model deployments, boom, go over here and you'll see now inside of this deployment, we've got everything up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see that the deployment name, that's really the important part. Honestly, that's all it is. Okay. So it's actually this right here. Okay. So actually, no, sorry, that's model name. So you need this, whatever you, whatever you called it, right? use that so this is from my previous build so i'm just going to use that one here and i'm going to change the endpoint as well to be the previous one that we had so exactly what i showed you before but that's essentially what you need okay and then the key is what allows you to go ahead and actually use it so what i'm going to do now uh, are these for available for students to count? Yes, you can, 100%, yeah? So at this point now, I'm gonna go ahead and replace my keys. So I'm gonna replace my secret key, my Azure key, and my API key, and I'm gonna hide and save this and hide the screen. So I'm gonna do that right now to save ourselves a bit of time because I had to hide a bunch of keys earlier on, which uh, is just the way it is. So I think I've got my keys all here. So I've got my text translation key, and then I've got one more, which is my clerk key. I'm just gonna go ahead and find that one right now. So let me just go ahead and quickly find my clerk key. Let's see how this is see how fast I can do this. All right. So I believe da, 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 da. Uh, where is it gone? Users uh, so she's got customization integrations. Boom. Um no no. No. Okay, let's go to boom. I need to get my Okay, that's fine. All right, so for the keys, I believe it's in setting API keys. There you go, boom. All right, so if you ever lose it, don't worry about it. Just go to your personal dashboard clerk and then go to here and then copy that. And then you get SK test key, okay? So in this case, you also get a publishable key, which you, you're allowed to public. So in this case, SK, SK 
there you go i've got my key all right so i've replaced all my keys you guys have seen what you saw before and now i've gone ahead and closed my environment file okay so you would need to do the same thing i'm going to include an environment example file inside of the code that you can go ahead and you know copy and all that good stuff but at this point now we've got everything set up and deployed right so you would have had your deployment up and running and whatever your whatever you decide to name it make sure the model is whisper and the deployment name matches the one in your environment file okay so once you've done that now we're good to run right so what i want to do now is for the translate function so this is the next part we're going to do so the translate function i need to create a request so basically here i'm going to um request to the uh translation api so the azure translation api um to translate the input text so it's basically exactly what i'm going to do okay so we're going to say const response equals await and i'm going to say axios oh actually i mean okay so I usually do it with fetch, but I'll show you, I guess, with Axios today, it's fine. So in this case, I'm gonna do npm i Axios. I forgot to refactor this, but Axios is another request library. Uh, I'll show you a bit of both. I've, I always use, I tend to use um, fetch a lot of the time, but it's fine, we can use Axios today. So Axios, and here I'm gonna type in the base URL. So base URL, so base URL. And this one here, let me import uh, Axios, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to and right now it's freaking out so let me just make sure i've imported it correctly yeah that's correct base you are, yeah there we go nice base url and for this one we're going to have the endpoint so i've got an endpoint here which the endpoint by the way i've forgotten to do is i need my three variables so at the top of the file boom we're going to have the key endpoint and location and these are going to correspond to those keys that i added into my environment file earlier um, I can see people going, what is up, Sunny? What's good, Ashutosh? Good to see you. Okay, now, it, they do reply, by the way, uh, Nuke. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. Yeah. So I think it may be about a day or so, right? Uh, can you include an example environment file when you commit to repo, please? Some dummy values. Yes, I will 100% do that. So Jay, remind me to do that at the end of this build. I will go ahead and add an environment example file to the GitHub repo, and I'll push it straight away after this. Uh, I got you. All right. So we've got the endpoint. So this is going to be, oh, my neck is cracking. All right. So at this point, we've got that. And then we need to pass in a couple of requestings. Now, this is essentially to go towards the um, translate API. So in particular, I'm talking about this right now as your AI translator. Okay. So essentially, I've done the hard work for you. So I'm going to show you just how to use it. So in this case, we need to pass in a URL and this is going to go towards the forward slash translate. Oh, it's not even the forward slash translate. So it's going to be this endpoint translate URL. The method is a post. Okay. So it's going to be a post function and then uh, the headers. Now the headers, I need you to pay very close attention to. Okay. So these headers right here are actually going to be the following. So you have to make sure that these are crystal clear the same. These again, I get from the documentation. For v4, what you see here, that's actually from something called UUID. So I'm going to install that library right now. That's just for whenever you want to install certain uh, IDs, that kind of thing. You know, you can go ahead and use this special library called UUID. So if I go ahead and pop that in, sometimes it doesn't install the type definition. So you can go ahead and copy that, paste it in, install the type definitions yourself. It will get rid of that error like so. And then over here, we've got the subscription key, which is the key, the subscription region, which is location content type and the client trace ID, all right? So all of these things you need to use to go ahead and get set up, okay? Now, once you've done that, we're gonna simply pass in a few parameters. Now these parameters, this part, I would say really take your time with this. And I would recommend that honestly, that if you do get stuck at this point, again, fill out the first link in the description, go to the GitHub repo and check against the code here, because this is where I find that you're gonna make a slip up, probably even like a lowercase or something like that. And your headers aren't gonna work and it's not gonna be correct and you're gonna get frustrated. So I would say, just check it out, save yourself a bit of hassle, okay? Now for the API version, we're using 3.0. And then here I'm gonna say from, okay? Now here I'm gonna check, I'm gonna see if your input language was auto, so essentially the auto detect. So in this case, if I do auto detect, then I'm gonna basically have the from be no, okay? Otherwise I will introduce the language. So basically what I'm saying here is that if the input language was actually, um, a nice little viewer, I guess. Uh, I've got uh, I've got somebody special watching, and I'm not sure who it is. I'm not sure what the name is on the on the screen right now. But in this case, um, 
we've got yeah so if i've got the input language is auto then we basically put no and by default if i don't give a from value uh it uses an auto detection from the api on the api side right otherwise i put in the input language just like en es for spanish and so forth and then i need to specify a2 right and that's simply the output language okay so that's basically how it goes ahead and does it yo what's up we got nigeria in the house as well and then we got to pass in the data, right? So the next step is the data we pass in. Now this is actually an array and the object is going to be a text and you can pass in several items here, but in this case, I'm just gonna pass in the actual raw input, right? Now the final step is I need to basically specify the response type. So in this case, I'm just gonna say it's a JSON response type. So this is how we go ahead and do it with our Axios. Now what is freaking out here? So we've got a little bit of an issue here. Now, the endpoint, what have I messed up here? Um, oh yeah, so key, location, endpoint. Okay, so my Axios is freaking out because I'm out of type, blah, 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 is not assignable to prior to string. Okay, so I've got my key, I've got my location, I've got my, everything's good on that front. Interesting, what the hell? Okay, let me just double check something. I'm gonna just make sure. Why are we using Axios and not Fetch? You can use, feel free to use Fetch if you want. Okay, so I made a little issue there. What have I done? So what's the change here that, that's happening that I'm making such a silly mistake from? So raw form data. I actually don't know what the hell the change was. Um, input language from API version. Okay, if someone else can spot that. I can't actually spot it myself. I think I've just pasted in a weird character but i think okay so at this point yeah this is what you would want right again the code is in the description first thing in the description fill it out and so forth and you'll get that okay so we've got the response here now i want to pass the response data right so in this case the actual response will come back so this would actually be the translation so const data equals response to data and now inside the data firstly i want to say if there was an error for whatever reason i'm going to throw an error or show it on the console instead and then I'm going to uh, do the following. So then I'm going to return the previous state with the output. And that's going to be essentially the translated text. Okay. Now in between this step, I'm actually going to go ahead and actually, you know, this is actually where I would go ahead and, um, one second. This is actually where I would go ahead and, um, I would actually go ahead and push it to the database, right? So here I'm actually going to have a step, which says push to database. So I'm going to say push to MongoDB, yeah, right? So we're going to build that afterwards. But in the beginning, just for now, I'm just going to return the previous state and the output. And this is basically the translation that comes back for us, okay? So at this point, that's all good. So that's the translate function down. Now, when we do this, I'm returning the previous state, but the output is the main consideration now, okay? So when we do this now, what I should see, guys, is from translation form. So let's go to translation form. Oh, this is a banger. All right, so we've got the state come back. So now at this point, once I've submitted that form, the state, we should actually see this get. So when, when the submission happens and when it comes back because it's asynchronous, the state will ping off. All right, so now when the state pings off, again, we want to tap into that. And the way we can do that is we can use something called a use effect. All right, and then what I can do is I can set the output. So what we do is when we say a use effect. All right, the vibe is so sick today. Smash that like button as well, guys. It helps reach, honestly, you don't understand. If you haven't already liked this video, destroy the like button because it helps this the algorithm push you out to as many people as possible. So truly it will go such a long way just to destroy that like button. So we're gonna change it to state. And then for the use effect, I'm gonna go ahead and boom. boom. Now for here, I'm gonna say if state, dot output now you're probably wondering what what was the output well it was actually from our action and remember the output was here so if it came back with an output then what we do is we set the output to state the output okay so if we've done it all correctly now we should have a full circle setup right so in this case let's go ahead and do this you can see my you know map here so let's go ahead and give it a try and i don't know if i've actually hooked it up so we go form action is there good stuff let's go ahead and type it in okay so um, let's type in something like uh, hello world and Spanish is to submit. Okay, so, oh, okay, bit of an error right now. We got a 401, right? So let's just firstly see. 
I mean, they're actually not authorized to do that. So in this case, um, so unauthorized, which so interesting. So at this point I am actually, let's just sign out and sign in because I've got two things running. It could be screwing it up a little bit. I just want to make sure that that is not the case. Uh, adrenaline rush is at its highest. Nuke's asking something. He goes, Sonny, did you pay to use your Azure account? No, I didn't pay. I've actually got a free account, but I've I put a card on the account uh, to, to help out, right? So let's do hello world. Let's try one more time. I don't think it will work. Okay, it did work. No, it didn't work. Okay, 4 1. Fine. So at this point now, we've got the use form state translate. Um, now, I think I've screwed something up in my middleware, but I'm going to you know fully give this a try and see now. So um in my middleware let me just double check in my middleware i've got forces translate that's fine um in my this is live debugging at its finest right now um it won't take long for you to get access by the way right um so in this case translation form for the translate form action is what is submitted off so translation form okay so i've got my upload of my form action here and to be honest with you, the first thing I want to do is debug it hand in hand. Okay, so let's go over here and let's check. Firstly, we can see the input language auto output language. So the input is actually, it's actually blank right now. So it's not actually passing it through the way I expected it. So if I go to my translate function, I can see if I console log and say, boom, 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 raw form data. And I look at my form now, let's just type in hello world. Um, and this just happened submit. Oops. So you can see it here. So I've got hello world, auto detection, output, and then I've got a 401. Okay. So, okay. So it's getting past this point, which is fine. So we're actually failing here at my translation, which means that my keys are probably messed up. So let's check my keys out. So I've got my Azure text translation keys. I'm going to check that one right now. So. And then my Azure, oh, okay, I, I, I know why. I've screwed up my keys, All right? So at this point, I'm going ahead and I'm checking my keys. Uh, so I actually, when I replaced them, I actually screwed up three of my, I screwed up two of my keys. So I'm gonna go back and change those right now. And I believe that is why it's happening. So I've gone ahead and I've just gone into my environment file and I've changed my keys over. And let's give this another shot. I'm gonna restart my server as well. And um, let's go ahead and see what happens now, what it says. Okay, so at this point, console log your keys. <laughs> nice try, but no. Um, so at this point, let's try do a refresh. And now let's do hello world and hit submit, boom. Do we get a 401? Okay, I'm getting a 400 now. Okay, interesting. Let's see what's going on. I get a bad request now. Okay, so at this point, I need to look at what's going on a little bit deeper because I need to, okay, this is where it gets tricky. So this is what I would say, uh, definitely check out the the code in the repo because this is where you still, small mistakes can make you know all the difference here. So we've got access my endpoint. Let's just double check this. So I'm gonna say console log endpoint. So after the submission here, we should be able to see that. So. This is live debugging at its finest, guys. So I'm going to type in hello world, boom, after the submission. Okay, so cognitive Microsoft translate. Oh my God, it worked, boom. Okay, so it it did work. Just give it a second, <laughs> all right? So don't do what I did and rush with it. Just give it a second, but there you go. It, it did work. So let's type in, this is awesome. And then let's do submit. Okay. Nice, <laughs> right? Perfectly good stuff, right? So uh, at this point, uh, whoever's asking about, you know, like, th yeah, just chill. Like it takes time for them to grant you access. Don't worry about it, right? It's normal. All right, so at this point, we've got the access endpoint. That's, so this is what you need, right? Again, if you get stuck at this point, first thing in the description, check it out, right? So debugging is a skill in itself. Always good to see it being done live. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I preach that part the most because that's really where 
uh, don't panic, especially when I'm live right now, I'm doing it. Don't freak out, it's all good. But you can see right now the auto detection works and it works in the way that we need it. If I do esto es impresionante and I go and do English, don't even ask what I might have tried to say that. But if I go ahead and do this and I do submit now, it should make this into English. There you go. Okay, so we have our translation down, right? So at this point now, we've still got to do our push to MongoDB, right? So in between this gap. So this is where I will do that, essentially there. So we'll go ahead and implement that afterwards when we set up MongoDB. However, at this point, I think that's great. So we've already got the translation working. That's perfect. The next step is to go ahead and style this out. And then we're going to go ahead and do MongoDB. And then we can do the Whisper AI. And then we can do the speech. Yeah, we got, we got a bit to do. Right, it's all good. All right, so for the translation form, let's style this out a little bit. So for translation form right now, I'm going to do a little bit of styling. So uh, where I have my form... And also, I remember, guys, only true OGs of the channel will know this track, right? I found it again. Jay's going to be like, yo, I didn't remember this. Uh, do you use a VS Code extension? Yes, I do. I think it's called Size or something, but I'll show you that later another time. Oh, I'll show you inside the for Sakura, right? So you can feel free to check that out. So in this case, we got the form action. So this is when I actually launched the for Sakura. If you know, you know. Yeah. So at this point, uh, for this div, I'm going to actually wrap everything inside another div okay so wrap put a div here get the ending and i'm going to go outside of this div outside of the second select div and i'm going to paste it there okay so outside of the top two and then here i'm going to say flex oops not felix flex flex column space y of two and i usually space them out a little bit Mr. Frangos, this is the OG chat. I'm telling you, when I dropped this one the first time, I was like, yo, god damn, that is crazy. German sound goes, I remember this vibe. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Guys, now also it's worth mentioning that everything is mobile first, right? So this is mobile first, and then I can add a breakpoint because on a large screen, I want it to change to a row. So at this point now on a large screen, that it changes to a row. Right now, you probably see there's a little gap there because you need to actually get rid of the space that you applied on the large screen. So we're going to say space Y of zero. But on the large screen, I'll do space X instead. So space X of two. Boom. And now you can see, boom, perfectly lined up with a bit of straightness. Okay. Now I can go ahead and style out these divs. So I can say flex one on that. Space between the Y axis of two. I'm going to copy this thing as well. Go down here to this second div pop it in as well now you can see they're both trying to use up full space that's a lot better okay awesome stuff um and already that's looking clean guys i like the look of that everything's nice now for the select triggers i'm going to style these a little bit so for the select triggers i'm actually going to go ahead and give them a little bit of a different styling here so like so i'm going to style that accordingly and you can see that's a bit nicer than what we had before I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, select trigger down here. Boom. There you go. And um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So select language, boom. Okay. Uh, and that looks much nicer. So now you can see auto detection. Hello world. Submit. And we see hola mundo. Nice. Okay. So good stuff. So at this point, we've got everything the, kind of the way I want it. Um, the only thing I would say is... This outside div is okay for now, I guess. Yeah, this is fine. I actually want to have a little bit of a, like, kind of a, a little bit of a cheat for this, but it's just going to be a text thing that's always highlighted. So it kind of indicates that we're on text. And if you click speak, it will go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add that in now, just for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to add that in at the top right now. Um, I'm going to go back to the playlist as well in the top. So these are some newer tracks. I think they're, they're kind of like flow state e tracks, so they're going to help you out if you if you ever get stuck in that kind of vibe. So at the top of this file, I'm going to have a div, and inside of it, I'm going to have a div and a p tag, right? So a little trick here: so when you do this, you can say div, and inside I want a p tag. And you can see that, boom, nice, right? And I also want a, another div. I forgot to mention. Um, I'm getting confused a little bit. I think I want this, on this, I want this to be a flex container. I want this one inside to be a, a flex container as well. This will have space between the y-axis of two, uh, x-axis of two, sorry. And how many children does this have in it? It has one. Okay, that's right, yeah. Because then down here, I will have the recorder. The recorder being this recorder button here, the speak button. All right, now this p-tag, I'm going to say text, boom. 
And then for the at the above it, I'm gonna have an image tag. This will be an XJS image tag. Boom. Saved you a bunch of time by passing in all we need as well. So let's go ahead and pop this in like there. Boom. So you've got the text there. I'm gonna style this out a little bit. So this is gonna be you can just feel free to copy my class name at this point. Again, all of the code is in the first link in the description. So you can actually go ahead and get it for yourself. I always get a question. Sonny, you're not showing us every bloody line. It's fine. It's okay. I, I'm giving you the code in the first link in the description. So use it. <laughs> all right. And the next step is for the div that surrounds the image. So this one right here, this is going to be a flex container item center. The group is important because the group means that if I highlight over any of the outside, the inside I could control, I can make it the text underlined. So I've given it a bit of custom styling here. And now you can see if I highlight over any of the group, you see how the text underlines, that's how you go ahead and get that effect. Okay. So at this point, really nice. The only thing that I noticed is that the, um, we go to page translate. This needs to have a bit of padding on it because right now it doesn't look that nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on a mobile, it by default, it should have a padding of 10. So it kind of spaces it out. Now on a large screen, once you hit that or extra large screen, once you hit that break point, I can get rid of my padding and I can give a margin bottom of 20 always as well. So that way you can scroll beneath the history, right? But now you can see, look at that. That's automatically looking amazing, much cleaner, much nicer. We can get rid of the marking there. Translation form. Okay. So really good stuff. That's working nicely. Now I do want to add something called a debounce. Now a debounce essentially means that when I stop typing, I want it to wait, let's say 500 milliseconds and then boom, I want it to go ahead and actually translate the text for me. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add that in now. So I'm going to show you how to do a debounce. So debounce is a very good sort of a, uh, how do I, what do I call it? Like a technique in coding. Uh, and it basically means that when the user stops typing or their input, oh my God, I have to crack my neck. Sorry guys. My neck is like super, like, I think my chair's like not straight right now. Okay. We're good. My neck is dying. <laughs> I, I, I think I pulled it yesterday. All right. So at this point now, we've got the, it's a good coding practice. Exactly. Thank you, Jay. So the way you do a debounce with a raw use effect is we do a use effect and this use effect is going to be dependent on the, um, the input, right? So when the user types in, so every time the user types in this code will fire off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if there was no state, right? So if there was no state dot input, so essentially this means, um, oh, sorry, not state. If there was no input, but I'm also going to do a trim because sometimes if you do an enter key, you don't want that to classify as valid input. So if there is no input, we're simply going to return. We don't want to do anything, right? Um, denounce is it awesome to avoid button clicks. Nice for us. Oh, nice. Denounce or debounce, but let me know. All right. And at this point, we're going to do a little manual debounce. We're going to say const delay debounce function. Oops. Delay debounce function. And we can just say FN equals set timeout. Okay. So I'm going to use a function here called set timeout. And basically all we're doing here is I'm going to submit the form. Right. And I'll show you how we do this. Uh, but 500 every 500 milliseconds. So after we've basically done, we have a 500. Now, if you find that it's too intense, you can change it to like a thousand for like a one second. So if I like half a second, I think it's got a kind of snappy feel. But afterwards, we need to make sure we clear our timeout for that function. So that way we're not, you know, having several timeouts that are kind of overlapping each other every time the input changes, because otherwise you're gonna have several instances of a set timeout, which is gonna be chaos. Okay. So at this point now, what I can do is where we have that submit button, this one here, I'm going to have a reference to this. And all this is going to simply do is going to be a submit button reference, right? Now this submit button reference, we can create inside of our code here by saying const and think of it as a pointer, right? So it's basically going to be a pointer element. And this pointer will basically be like a finger that's just pointing at that element. And then when I need it to, I can say click. That's always going to do, right? So as simple as that. So submit button reference. Now here I can say submit button reference dot current dot click. Um, yeah. Okay. Boom. And we use optional training because that could be undefined, right? So in this case, submit the form. Boom. Nice. Okay. So everything looks pretty sweet there. And now what I can do is I can test it. So after this, this should be perfect. So if I type in hello world one, two, three, after 500 milliseconds, it will submit and boom, there you go. Hello mundo one, two, three. If I type in five, six, seven, it should say just five, six, seven. Boom. Okay. There you go. All right. This is awesome. 
right? And now if I was to go ahead and get rid of it, it shouldn't do anything. There you go. Because of my defensive programming statement there. So there you go. Debouncing done, right? So a really nice little example there for you all. Um, next up, we're going to have the recorder component here, which will eventually be built. But we've got, see, things are happening pretty cool. I think now at this point, what I would like to do is set up the history. So the history essentially would be this right here, right? So I want us to be able to do all of this. So that way I can start inputting into the database. And once we do that, it will be very simple because the way I'm building it is very sort of, it's a very good programming practice the way that today's build is being built because essentially you'll find that adding on new features such as the recording just tack into the overall flow so it won't actually require any additional work once we get it up and running so to get the the uh, database side of things working we're going to go ahead and head over to our azure and let's go to our portal.azure.com and i want you to go to home and what we're going to do now is create a cosmos db all right, so Azure Cosmos DB. Now, I want you to click on Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB, and we're actually going to look at the V core. All right, so what you can actually do is if you just click on the Cosmos DB and then click on create, it actually gives you the run through. Okay, so here in this case, that like you can see Cosmos DB for MongoDB, Apache, all this stuff. So we're going to use it for MongoDB. Now, MongoDB is a very popular NoSQL database. If you've been wanting me to do that, smash that like button and subscribe right now because I did it for you guys or asking me over and over again. Okay, so boom, create. And now you can see vcore cluster or are you so in this case a vcore cluster is the one i'm interested in let's click on create and again here we can go ahead and do our resource group so youtube google translate clone cluster name so in this case you can call this whatever you want i'm just gonna call it youtube google translate clone like so and then i'm gonna do um free tier it's fine uh well, you could do free tier whatever you want i'm gonna do free tier it's fine east us it's fine uh username so in this case i'm just doing a username and then here are the password. So I'm going to change my password. No, I'm going to do the password that I put in my environment file. But I'm going to change it a slightly little bit. All right. So in this case, you just do not mess up your password. So I've gone ahead and given this a password here. So in this case, there you go. And I'm going to go ahead and click on review and create. And then click on create. And now here, create cluster without Firebase rules or re return to, uh, so in this case, we're going to do without, so return to add Firebase rules. So in this case, public access, allow public access to all. So the reason why we would have to actually do this is because when we actually go ahead and um, use uh, Vassell, Vassell actually does requests from dynamic IP addresses, which means that you need to go ahead and actually allow to be supported from anywhere and the only way you can get around this is if you use the uh vassell enterprise plan and then you can get something called a um you can get like fixed containers which can basically have fixed ip addresses which you can then whitelist but otherwise for this instance you'll have to allow all the access right so this failed for some reason let's see at least one deployment failed. please list deployment operations for details okay let's see what happened operation details each subscription is limited to one free tier account per region. Okay, so I've already created my tier account. So what I'll show you here is, let me go ahead and delete this one. I'll show you again. I'll do a deployment. I'll do a paid one. It's fine. I'll do it for you guys. Create. Azure Cosmo for MongoDB. Create. So you guys will get a free one. I'm not going to use a free one right now. Plus the name. Let's just do YouTube. Google. Translate. Clone. DB fine east free tier no it doesn't matter username and then we'll do the same thing so password there we go and then we're going to do networking i'm going to allow all boom there we go and then i'm going to do review and create there we go valid information but we'll okay so something failed in the basics uh can Please configure cluster tier. Okay, so in this case, I mean, you can really go ahead and mess around with this. Again, I've already done the free tier before. So in this case right now, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I won't do it. Okay, so all you need to do is do the free tier, right? Do the free tier. What you end up getting is you'll get this right here. Let's just make it simple. I've already got one here, right? It's a Google Translate clone. Now, once you get that, you'll get this. Perfect. Hey, hey. All right. So at this point, you've got, you know, everything that you need here. And the important part is the connection strings. Now, connection string is your, honestly, what you need the most to focus on. So at this point, what we're going to do is copy this connection string. 
and I'm going to create a new file called um, da -da -da. at the top level we're going to call it um, let's do create a new folder called mongodb and inside of mongodb I'm going to type in db.ts okay now here I'm going to say const connection string equals and I'm going to paste okay now you can see I've got the cluster here that you'll basically go ahead and connect to and then you've got the username and the password right so what I want you to do here guys is I'm going to go ahead and do this now what I want you to do firstly is replace this with your username. So in this case, just do username for now. And then here, re replace this with your password. So in this case, I've changed my password, so you guys won't be able to just get into it. But let's just say this was the password, yeah? And it could be an uppercase or whatnot. It could be like this, right? So in this case, say that was the password. This is this string is very important now because what I want you to do is copy this string, paste, as in copy it. I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy the actual string and then come back to the file. So I'm actually gonna change the password now to be the actual string. So I'm, I'm just copying my actual one now and then I'm undoing it. So I've got it in my clipboard. Okay, so let's just imagine this is essentially it. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go over to my extensions. I'm gonna type in MongoDB. And what I need you to install is this one right here, MongoDB for VS Code, okay? Install that, now go down here and I want you to type in new connections, okay? Connect with the connection string. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in. So I've actually replaced the username and password here and I'm gonna paste, so I'm pasted it. Okay, so in this case, I can show you that bit because it doesn't show it. I pasted it and I'm hit enter. And what we should see now is it will connect. Oh, I've done the invalid. I forgot it's the old key that I used. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to do a... Um, let me get rid of my connections firstly. So get rid of that. Let me get rid of this one so it's completely empty. Yeah, we can get rid of that. Add a connection. And let's do... Um, get rid of this. Let's do connect. And I'm going to do the same thing, but with the correct password this time. And I hit enter. And now, guys, what you'll see is it says connection. And then you see this test, right? Now, I've already got a test, you know, ignore the documents here. You won't have this. Your one will just be empty, right? So even if I was to get rid of this, I can go ahead and drop the database to give you an absolute fresh situation so this is what you'll see right so this is exactly what you'll see now and this is very important because now i can navigate my database in an easy way draw gerard what is up dude uh good to see you on the channel all right so in this case boom so you're sunny how are you og i'm doing good man how are you at this point now um yeah so at this point in the connection string here so what i want you to do is replace this with those um, environment variables that we spoke about earlier, okay? So in this case, you're gonna do process.environment mongodb username and process mongodb password. And then inside of your environment files, I want you to change it accordingly. So I've already shown you that before, right? So I use backticks as well, so you can do interpolation. And then all we do is we basically need to install Mongoose, okay? So in this case, we're using Mongoose in today's build to make accessing a MongoDB base, uh, database a lot simpler. So in this case, Mongoose is right here. So you can do npm install Mongoose save. And this will essentially allow us to go ahead and actually interface with our database in a kind of a, a more object-friendly way, okay? So we can define schemas, that kind of stuff. So in this case, we can say if there is no connection string, then we can say, please define the MongoDB and blah, 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 right? Um, so that's fine, that's completely cool. And then we can say const connect db, right? So I'm gonna make a little bit of a helper function now. Now there's several ways you can do this. You can do this when the, it first starts out, which is the easiest way. But in this case, I'm actually gonna do a couple of things here. So firstly, we've already installed Mongoose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say import Mongoose from the top. And now first you wanna see if I've already connected or not, okay? So if I've already connected to the database, Mongoose connections will already have something that I can check against. So mongoose.connection, ready state. If it's greater than one, then we've already connected to our MongoDB, okay? Otherwise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a connection with MongoDB with mongoose.connect, right? So a little helper function, mongoose.connect, connection string, and then it'll say connected to MongoDB. Otherwise, it'll be an error thrown and so forth, right? And then what I do is I export the default connection DB, uh, connect DB. So this is my like HANA helper database function. And for the simplicity of things today, I'm just gonna call connect DB whenever I have access, to, whenever I want to access the database as a protective measure, okay? But you can call this at one point in your build and then only use it accordingly, right? Quick little water break before we continue on, but you guys have been absolutely awesome so far. So 
let's keep on killing it guys so at this point now i'm gonna go ahead and uh there we go so let's go ahead and do it now so at this point i've got the try and catch so we've got our connect db statement so after this we want to go ahead and create something called a modal okay no not modal a model <laughs> a modal a model right i spend too much time doing the, the ui stuff so at this point inside of my mongo database i'm going to type in a new folder called models and inside of here i'm going to have a user.ts right let me make this user.ts now this is essentially where all of the user logic will lie okay so i've got a bunch of things that i want you to kind of you know, don't freak out it's just going to take time to understand what's going on here but i promise you it's actually very much worth understanding what i'm doing to make your life you know to help you improve your database sort of side of things right so in this case import mongoose and document and schema from mongoose and then import connect db from the database the next couple of things are i'm going to define what a user looks like now a user is essentially going to have a user id and then it's going to have translations and this is going to be an array of a type called i translation okay and i user it's just kind of a standard that we can use you can make it user as well but it's so that it doesn't clash with the file names so i'm going to also make a translation now a translation simply has a from a to a from text and a to text so the from and to is essentially en for like english es for spanish for example the from text will be the text that i've sent the to text will be the translated text and then the timestamp is the current timestamp and then what i can do is i can create something called a schema for the translations so what i can do is i can say const translation schema equals new schema the timestamp basically the default would be the type data but the default will be the, the current date and this will be server oriented because it's happening on the server. And then we have the from text from, and you know, all this is gonna be string. And then we're gonna create a user schema. Okay, now you can go ahead and separate the translation schema. If you want into a separate file, it's fine, but I'm gonna make things easier and just do it in one file for now. But then we've got the user schema, which is a new schema of type user. Okay, and this will be the user ID and the translations. And here, you, if you wanted to, you can also, I guess, go ahead and cast I translation as well to make it like super robust, right? So now we've got the user schema. So that's our schema's done. The next step is, Lawrence, what's good, dude? Welcome to the uh, stream. So now what I can do is I can check if our user model already exists. Otherwise, we can go ahead and collect it. So in this case, the way to safely access our user like sort of schema is we can go ahead and do mongoose.models.user or so this would be if it's already basically exists. Otherwise, I initialize a user instance off of our schema. Right? So basically, and this will allow me to safely interact with the database in a, let's just say in a much more simple way. Okay. So then let's think about the first step that we want to do. When I go ahead and type in something like hello world. Okay. At this exact point after it debounces or I click the submit button, it should say, you know, it does a translation at that point, it should have saved into the database. So if I go into my translate, right? So in this case, translate so far. So if I do it something like this, now I can go ahead and do something like uh, here. So inside of push to MongoDB. So let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, this song's a banger as well. Okay. So <clears throat> now what I want to do is firstly, I want to check if the input language was raw, uh, sorry, auto. Right. So if the input language is auto, then I'm going to change the input language to be the detected language. So basically what this means is like, it just basically is saying if the language is set, set it to the detected language that came back because the data basically, let's just say it, uh, once I sent it off to like, you know, Azure to AI translate, it's going to detect. So if I'm speaking like Hindi, for example, it will come back with HI. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the input language to be HI. So it changes from auto to actually HI because in the database, we want to know what language it detected. Right. So that's why the data came back with, you know, once we made that request and everything from uh, hitting Azure, that's fine. Now we've got a try catch block. So the try, let's do a try catch block. Okay. Now the translation. So we're going to create an object for the translation. So it's going to be this to from, from text and to text. Right. And again, you could even use the I translation. So I translation, uh, you know, kind of start a type there, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. Just keep it simple. Uh, and then we're going to create an add or update user. Okay. And this is going to basically take a user ID and the translation. Now I need to create this and this is essentially going to basically say, uh, let's also just console log an error if, if you know, something went wrong. 
Um, but basically what it's going to say is if the user doesn't exist, it's going to add the user with that translation. If it does exist, then I'm going to go ahead and actually sort of update the user's translations to add on th this translation. So into their existing database, right? So in this case, add or update user. So let's go to our user and now we need to create this function. Okay. So in this case, remember it's worth mentioning just to make this extremely clear, right? When you're working with MongoDB, oh no, Mongoose, Mongoose is server side code took me a while to figure that one out but mongoose is server side code don't get it twisted if you try and access it from your client it's going to mess up okay so just keep that in mind right so at this point now i'm going to create our function called so it's going to be an asynchronous function here it's going to be asynchronous we're going to export async function add or update user and this is going to take a user id and a translation okay so like so right now inside of this we're going to go ahead and do a couple of things right and this is going to return a promise right so this is going to return a promise and inside of that promise we're going to have a user right so it's going to return the user object okay and it's freaking out because it's like whoa 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 you didn't return anything in this one blah 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 that will be gone afterwards right so the first things first is with mongoose we can do special queries to our database the first one is we're basically going to have a filter and this filter is going to check against a user's id then we're going to have something called an update right now the update essentially does the following it sets the wherever the user id exists it will go into that record or it will create it so set typically in database terms is if it exists add to it if it doesn't exist uh create it and then we're going to push into the translations our translation okay that we basically pass in this parameter now at this point here we're going to have a set of options as well so in this case we're going to have a set of options and now upset basically what i've done here to simplify this a little bit for you guys is i've gone ahead and actually added in a couple of things so a little bit of a you know a comments area so that way you guys can feel free in the code repo when you're looking at it basically upsert ensures that if the document is created if it doesn't already exist right the new option basically allows us to it returns back the updated document after the operation is complete right if you didn't do that and you didn't you just made it false or you didn't include it it would return the old document right and then the defaults right so this one set defaults on insert so defaults meaning i believe it would be the um it would be for like the date and the times so the timestamp right now at that point we're good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to await connect the database right so i'm going to make sure that we're already connected to the database now again you can actually not prevent this but if you just did it at one point in the code base but Again, this one, this is fine to have as a safety measure if you're trying to be defensive by it, because that way we can ensure that connection to the database is present before we continue on. Now I can have a try catch block. Okay, so try catch block will happen. And then this is where I basically use something called user.find one and update. Right. So this next bit of code is the interesting part. So inside of our try catch block, what we do is we say const user, and this will return a user or a null. Right. And we're basically going to say user.find one on update. We pass in the filter, which is basically going to try and find a user with this user ID. We pass in the update, and this is going to basically say update this user and push in the translations. And then we got the options, which are basically like, for example, as I explained previously, right? Now, once we get that back, right, what we can do is I'm going to console log it, and then I'm going to say if there was no user, then we should throw an error saying user not found and was not created, right? Otherwise, if all went well, we're simply going to return the user. Okay, now if it didn't go well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the error and just say error adding or updating the uh, user, right? I'm just going to change the error. Okay, so at this point now, it stops freaking out because we are returning a promise as a user. Okay, so that will work the way that we expect it. So now we've got this function add or update user. Let's go ahead and give this a try. So on our front end here, so remember this is from the, this is a server component. So it's okay to run this function. So there we go, add or update user. And then the translation here is actually saying, well, actually it's not a type translation. So if I was to go ahead and do this, oh, actually, because I uh, see what I did here was I actually did the full eye translation. But what I would recommend is the eye translation actually has a bunch of other stuff because it extends the document type. So what I would do here just to kind of simplify it, I guess, is just kind of maybe 
I would define maybe just the timestamp content and then extend that accordingly. So what I would do here is actually instead of saying I translation, I probably would just do from text to text and because I'm not passing in everything, I'm just passing in, I'm not passing in, for example, the timestamp here. It's doing that on the server, right? right? So you can go ahead and make that a bit cleaner. Um, Tiberio says, science feature in Next.js is wonderful because we don't need to have a backend to manage database connections. With your experience, do you recommend doing this in larger applications? I think there's a use case for both and I'll show you why in today's video as well. So I do have a point where the root handler instance can come in handy, especially when it comes to revalidating tags. I think I do that here in this build. I'm sure I do. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I'll come to that. Um, but this is, a, but remember, this is still a backend, right? This is still a server action. It's happening on the backend. It's no different to essentially a root handler. It's essentially, if you check the root request, it's still like a post to the backend. So don't get it too confused. It's still essentially a backend. It's just, you don't have to write separate root handlers now, right? With this approach. So um, it still is a backend, right? So in this case, it's just not the traditional sense. So now that that's happened, let's give it a try, guys. Okay, so at this point now, if I type in, and what I'm gonna do to sort of see if this works is here. I clicked in this and nothing is there right now, okay? So we don't see anything here. So what I should see now, if I type in, hello world one, two, three, let it deep bounce, or yeah, I could click submit and there you go. Hello Mundo123. And let's go ahead and pop in our, our, let's have a look in the terminal. And we can see, look, user added or updated, connected to MongoDB. And you see how it says connected to MongoDB because the connection wasn't established before. So good thing to have that, right? And next time I do it, if I type in hello world one, two, three, four, now it should say already connected. So you see, look, the second time already connected to MongoDB, but the first time it wasn't connected. This is why the defensive programming statement can actually come in quite handy. And you see user added or updated. And now you can see look, the first one, there was one translation and the user's ID was ED at the end of it. And the same thing happened again, the user ED at the end, right? So now you got the one, two, three and one, two, three, four. So let's check in the database to see if that actually happens. So we go to our MongoDB, we click on our connections, click down on test, click down on users, and we have a document and boom just like that i have my documents in there look at that guys absolutely beautiful stuff working the way that we wanted it and we can see in this nice little extension how we can actually go ahead and get things down the way that we need to so really really clean stuff that's awesome if you're liking that and you learn something new destroy that thumbs up button okay so in this case that's working perfectly the way i wanted it um, we're doing well for time right now. So in this case, we've got the add or update user functionality done. So now at this point, we've got, you know, the, what we wanted so we can actually add to the database. So that's great. So I guess next, the natural step is I want to see that on the front end, right? So let's go ahead and go to our translation uh, file. So in this case, uh, our <coughs> app translate page. So here, translation history. So I'm going to create a translation history component and then i'm going to pop it down here and boom and you can see why these builds are so important because they really do showcase 101 different skills in different contexts right so rfce boom we've got the translation history now inside the translation history this is, i want to keep it a server component so i'm my challenge really here is keep everything as much as a server component as reasonably possible so in this case for the translation history now what i want to do is I want to firstly get the user ID. So I want to make sure, you know, you're authenticated. That's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that from next clock. And again, clock making things so simple as always really, really nice. All right now for the URL, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically try and make a request to our, so as I mentioned before, I got a question previously, do I need to, you know, get rid of the backend stuff? Well, no, um, not entirely because in this instance, I actually need to do something. And the reason why is because when you're using the revalidate tags, there's a way that you need to kind of work with your fetching and your revalidation that root handlers have a place for. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a root handler. So the root handler is essentially going to be, we're going to call it a folder. And this is going to be called a translation, translation history. And this is going to be a get request. So I'll need to make a root.ts file in here. All right. So inside of here now, guys, what I want to do is I want to have a get request. So to make Next.js root handlers work, what you do is you simply have the following and then you can have whatever. So now I can make get requests to our, you know, our domain forward slash translation history. And I can make a get, if I make a post request, then you can just make it this opposed to delete patch so forth, right? So these are called root handlers in Next.js. Now, what I can do 
is I want to pass in the uh, user ID alongside this, right? So we can actually go ahead and do that right now. So if I have the, um, and this is not really sensitive information, so I don't really care. I'm gonna pass it in the get request, it's completely fine. So what I can do here is if I go ahead and I'm gonna create a URL. So I go to my um, translation history and I'm gonna say const URL equals, okay? Now this URL, because it's on the server side component, you have to actually pass an absolute URL. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm gonna check against my local development environment by saying, if the process.environment.node environment is development, then it's gonna be 3000. Otherwise, it will be the deployed URL, which is Vercel URL, and that actually gets populated when we deploy to Vercel automatically. And then I'm gonna do forward slash translation history, and then I'm gonna append a query param uh, which is user ID, okay? So this will basically be the request that I make to the backend, okay? Now, in order to make that request, all I do is I basically say const uh, response equals await. And in order to await, I need to go ahead and do asynchronous. And I'm gonna go fetch to the URL. However, I'm gonna add in an option here. And this option is gonna be next. And this is the cool part. So I'm gonna add a tag in here. Now the tag is really important because what this tag will allow me to do is from a server action, I can do something called a revalidate tag. And what it will mean is that wherever I use a fetch statement and I have this tag, once I create any mutation, for example, remember when I did that translate server action and I changed the data in the back end? What I can say is, okay, revalidate the tag translation history. And then when I call that function, any fetch that use that revalidate tag will actually refire off. And then it would basically refetch the data and update the UI. So in this way, with server actions, you can actually have the UI update accordingly, which is really powerful and really nice. And you can keep everything as server components and it will stream in the new data, which is just sick, okay? So at this point now, we've got the response there. And then once that comes back, what I would do is I'll take const translations, I'm gonna destructure and I'm gonna say from, because I'm gonna say the type of data to come back is gonna be translations uh, and it's actually gonna be an array of i translations, i translations, right? Uh, and there we go. And we say equals from await response dot JSON, right? So in this case, um, all the responses will be uh, translations arrays, right? Now, obviously this is not the case. It's not working right now perfectly. So uh, what we need to do is we actually need to create that endpoint. So we'll go to our root.ts inside of our translation history and we need to write it. So what I'm gonna do is firstly, I'm gonna get the search param and the way we do that is we do search for request.nextURL search params. So this will be that, you know, at the end of the URL where it has user ID. That's where basically how we get it, like so. And then what I do is I'm going to create a new function called get translations inside of my user schema. And I'm going to return it inside of the response.json. Okay. So very simple bit of code right now. And then the get translations we have to create. So for get translations, what I'm going to do is inside of my user, uh, model here. I'm going to create a function which will get me all of the translations for a user, right? So let's do the signature first. So inside of here, I'm going to create a new function. And this right here is going to basically be get translations. It's going to take a user ID and it's going to return a promise, which is an array of translations. Now, all we do here is we're going to try and firstly await a connection to the database, right? So first things first, await the connection to the database. Then we're going to have a try catch block. So a try catch block simply put, right? So at this point now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try find a user. Now, this is the nice thing about Mongoose. When I go ahead and do something like the following, I can say const user, user or no, await user.find one, and I pass in a criteria to find. And if we look at this, it finds a document if there is a match. Otherwise, it will not be a match, right? So if there is a user now, I can basically go ahead and do the following. So firstly, I'm gonna sort the user's translations by timestamp in descending order. So I can say user translations.sort. And I simply are rearranging it, right? And then it will return the translations after I've sorted them. This way, this way, whenever I make a request to the uh, the backend, it will always go ahead and give me it, right? And then afterwards, I can go ahead and throw an error if nothing happened here, okay? So in this case, throw error. 
Okay, so at this point now, you can see we've got the, uh, if there is a user that is found, so this will give me all the translations, it will sort them and then it will return the translations in the correct uh, appropriate response. So now we can go ahead and pull this, right? Now inside, back over at our translation history page, we can go ahead and pull this in. And now with this, what we should see is translations will go ahead and give us on the, um, we should be able to get the translation. So the way you can test this now is if we simply go ahead and we clear our logs with command K, if I refresh, we should be able to see if I have pulled that in correctly. Uh, let's do page translate, translation history, save. Already connected to MongoDB and you can see it's, it's pulled them in guys, look at that. So as soon as I refresh, so I'm gonna clear it. I'm gonna refresh this page and I'll show you. Look, if pulled in the translation history from these translations, right? And now I wanna show you something, right? So I'm gonna clear it. So you see, hello world one, two, three, I'm one, two, three, four. If I go ahead and say, uh, let's just type in, let's go Papa fam. Now, watch what happens. I'm not gonna to touch anything. I'm not gonna to touch anything at all, but look at what the key thing that happened, right? It went ahead and it did a mutation. Now, bear in mind, it didn't have any logic here to recall. All it had was a tag, translation history, okay? So the key part here is, oh, but in this case, it's not showing you the refetch, I guess, but still, uh, translation history. But when I actually went ahead and did that mutation on our action, so our translate action, what I wanna show you is the key bit of information here that will make it all work on the front end is this right here. If I type revalidate tag, Okay, so it, when I do revalidate tag, after I've manipulated the database, what will happen is it will basically say wherever you use the fetch to go ahead and get the history, I want you to go ahead and actually just scrap that and, and do it again, All right? So now it would refetch this. So if we see this, what we should see now is we should see two outputs, one when it does it, and then it would also go ahead and rerun or show it on the screen. So here I can say, Douche, douche, like those two lines, so we know it's in this file. So in this case, we see that, right? Now, if I let's go pop a fan one, two, three, and let's let's do this thing. Okay, so now let's have a look what happened. Okay, so already connected to MongoDB, and then user added or updated. Okay, great stuff. Now, I will show you that this actually works in in production, right? In the way that we expected to. Okay, so if we go to our translation history now. Codename says, sir, lovely to us. Greetings from Deutschland. What's up? Good to see you here. Got some Germans here. I love that. All right. So now I'm going to have a H1 with a history. There we go. And we're going to start styling it out, getting it look good. So if the translations.length is equal to zero, I'm going to say no translations currently exist. Okay. So I'm going to keep it very simple. At this point, we do have translations. So I'm going to show them. Now I'm going to have an unordered list. And in this unordered list, I'm going to firstly have a bit of styling. So this will have like a divide order. So we've got very simple. And then I'm going to say it's going to have a translations.map. So in this case, this is actually what I wanted. So translations.map, and then I'm going to have a list element. Now this list element is going to have a key, and this is going to be the translation.id. So you can see we've got a lot of things here, but one of the key things is actually the ID of the document. Okay. And then inside of this, we're going to have a div and I'm just going to go ahead and actually save us a little bit of time here. So the first thing is I'm going to have a div inside here. Now this get language is actually going to be a simple function, which takes a country code and returns the full uh, English word for it. So in this case, country code will so for example, I pass in like ES and then we use the international sort of API, which will basically convert it to English and it will return language in English. So in that case, if it was like Spanish, it will be ES would turn to Spanish. So it's going, oh, look at that guys. Look, English to Spanish, English to Spanish. Oh, nice. Okay, so looking good. Okay, so after that div, what I'm gonna have is a P tag with a time ago text, and I'm gonna have a delete translation button. So I'm gonna say time ago, which, and then we'll have a delete. All right, so I'm marking it out. And let's just style this out however we need to. So for this list element, we're gonna have a class name and I'm gonna say this is simply gonna be a flex, relative, and a bunch of other things. Okay, boom, so let's go ahead and do that. Nice, look at that, oh, nice, beautiful, All right? I'm just gonna read a comment here. So Hunter Macias says, man, Sunny is so knowledgeable. I would love to see a custom build of something he's passionate about developing instead of a clone. I'm definitely thinking of doing a SaaS series where I just build 
a sass every week or something like that and then uh yeah and we'll see where that goes uh, let me know if you're interested in that smash like button feel a war break okay we're going really well right and we actually we got a lot to do as well so let's keep on let's keep on smashing it guys so at this point now that'll be pretty cool okay keep it in mind awesome stuff all right so at this point now if i go ahead and let's test that it works with the revalidate tag logic okay so i'm going to go ahead and type in something like hi there and exclamation mark and wait for it revalidate so like, oh my god it works look how clean that was look hi there holla and then boom it went ahead and popped it in there english to spanish and it all detects if i went ahead and did this and change this to like english for example well let's just do greek for example right so i'm gonna do german oh no um yeah i'm gonna do auto detect to german look at that hello to hello okay <laughs> i guess that's how you say hello all right but there you go um yo frank goes yes please do a sas series oh i love that max goes love the idea of a sas series as well jay add that to the to do is that is that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a sas series and go crazy on it all right so I guess that's done all right so in this case look at that guys absolutely looking beautiful stuff and the revalidate tag is how we actually managed to make it do it so if i just want to show you guys something if i didn't have the revalidate tag in the translate action i want to show you what happens so if i get rid of this right and I, now i do this watch this if i type in hello world watch this hello mundo but nothing you see how nothing refreshed because no revalidating tag happens so in this case if i do this after the uh, mutation happens what we're saying is pop wherever you fetch from and recall it right and then refetch it so in this case now hello world one two three it will revalidate the tag and boom so that's how you get the server action flow updating the ui okay so in case you're wondering that's how you do it okay now next up let's do a time ago text so i'm going to do something very nice here so time ago text is pretty what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a nice little, uh, kind of a little, this is again a gimmicky thing, but I want to have it like, you know, five seconds ago, you did this and five seconds ago, you did that, for example. So here I'm going to type in time ago text dot TSX. And then we'll do RFCE, boom. And here I'm going to create a packet, um, import, import a React time ago package. So here I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and do NPM, oops, NPM I React time ago, like so. Okay, now here I'm gonna import React time ago like this. Make this a use client, and I believe we have to import the type definitions ourselves. So again, this is the little hack to do that. Boom, like so. I like this song. And then this is gonna take a date object. So in this case, take a date, and this is gonna be a date, which is a string. Okay. And then here I'm simply gonna return a React time ago component where the date is going to simply be the date that we passed in, okay? And now this is going to be a client component. You see what I've done there is I've basically, granu to a very granular level, I've gone ahead and made it so that I don't change everything to it. I just changed that one instance that I needed to a client component. So here I'm going to say p tag, and I'll say time ago, text, right? Date, like that. Okay, and what I would actually argue that I did wrong here no, it's fine. It's okay. Translation dot. This is not going to be this either. This is going to be uh, a new date. I say translation dot timestamp and to your ISO string. Okay, like that. And then here, because I made the above container relative, I can absolutely position with it. So I can say absolute top to. Oops, top to right to uh, text gray. Guys, let me know right now as well. A little side question, right? While I'm talking about this, I make text more as well. If I did a SaaS series and you guys actually like the product, would you consider using the SaaS product? Let me know right now in the chat. I'm super curious because I'm like, hang on a minute. We have something big here. And I just kind of clicked in my head. <laughs> I think that would be an awesome thing to do. Look at this, guys, as well. Look, two minutes ago, four minutes ago, seven minutes ago, eight minutes ago. Nice. It works. If I do Hello World 124, you can see now. Well, two seconds ago three seconds ago the only thing i would be careful of is when you refresh you might get a little yeah you go and this is just because the server gets six seconds the client gets seven seconds one one second ago so it's fine you can ignore that error yeah okay but abs frank goes absolutely would use it okay done i'm gonna do that frank you've you literally sealed my mind there i'm absolutely gonna do that DJ goes hello what's up dude good to see you all right next up is we're gonna create a, a, create a, a delete um 
a delete button. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's create a delete button. So we're gonna take delete translation button. Let's draft it out. And this is gonna take an ID of the translation post. So it's gonna be the translation dot underscore ID, like so. So let's create a delete, let's create a delete translation button, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, delete translation button. Uh, go back, RFCE. Oh God, what did I do? Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, do what I did there. RFCE. All right, boom. Okay, now this will take an ID, which is a string. So ID, which is gonna be a string. And then this will also be a uh, server component. However, here I'm gonna make a call to the backend, which will essentially allow me to uh, delete. Now, I'm just thinking about something. What have I done here? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, I made a silly mistake. Um, yeah, that's cool. Okay, this is gonna be a client component. So use client. Okay, now here's a little trick as well. So I'm gonna show you sometimes you don't want to use a server action within a form. In this instance, I want to create a server action to get the benefits of server actions and revalidates and all that kind of thing. But I wanna have it attached to a button click. So I'm gonna show you an example of how to do that. So in some instances, you may not wanna submit a form in the same way. You just might wanna have a kind of a, a, a click like uh, effect. Uh, so we're still gonna be wrapped in a form, but I'll show you a little trick around this, right? So let's say we had a form and then I'm gonna have a button now. This button I haven't actually installed yet. It's gonna be from Shad Cien. So let's go ahead and do uh, da, 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 da. from button from Shad Cien. Boom, boom, yeah. I want this button. So come on J, import there. So come on J to hide that as well. So that'll be done in a second. And now for this, I'm gonna say uh, button, boom, import it from there, like so. Uh, don't do what I just did. Okay. And then this will go ahead and have a trash icon. So a trash icon, you automatically get Lucid React icons when you go ahead and do um, uh, install Shad CN. So this will have a trash icon. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna have the type of the button be submit, the variant, uh, a few other factors here. So the type will be a submit button. So essentially you are kind of submitting this button as a form still, but uh, I'm gonna change a few things. I'm gonna style it up as well. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's actually just import it right now as well so we can see what we're doing. So like so, delete translate button. So you can see that we've got the button there looking pretty nice, but it's not doing anything right now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a form action and this action is going to be for the delete translation action. Like so, and what we can do is we can actually bind things in. What's up, Abo? Good to see you, man. We've got some OGs here today as well. What is up, man? I love to see the Papa Fan members in the house. It's worth mentioning, guys, that if you haven't already had a look, check out Zero to Full Stack Hero. I just dropped a link in the chat right now. It's also the third link in the description where you can be one of our OGs and actually learn to absolutely crush it in code uh, in, in the way that you deserve to, right? Somebody goes, um, has in India, and I really appreciate your efforts for the but can you make a video related to Boo Match dating app? Please, it's a humble request. Yeah, I'm actually thinking to make a dating app next again. So I might do that. So that might be pretty cool, right? So in this case now, I'm gonna create a delete translation action. So let's go to our actions. I'm gonna create a new file inside of here, delete translation action. And inside of this, I'm gonna go ahead and delete translation. I'm gonna create a function like so. This needs to have use server at the top because it is a server action, okay? Now, interestingly enough, you see how typically you're like Sunny, but you don't have form data. Whoa, I don't actually care about the form data here because what I'm gonna do is something a little bit different. I'm gonna bind a value to our action. Okay, now you're probably wondering what the hell? Like I'll show you, it's pretty cool. Basically, we have the delete translation action. So I need to go ahead and export this. Let's do an export default. There we go. And let's go ahead and import it here. Uh, delete translation action. Okay, I mean, I'll import in a second, but really it's gonna be from here. Delete translation, what did I do? Action, oh. Okay, there you go. And this would be, boom, like that, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is, oh, sorry, I've completely messed up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a delete translation action. And what we do is we take the delete translation, but we bind a value to it. So the first value is actually, you know, I think it was the, the this instance, but in this case, we can do no. I want to bind the ID to it. 
okay and now we've got a separate variant of this right which is essentially going to be this so if we click into our uh delete translation why is this not happening i not respond uh let's do delete translation delete translation let's save that let's get rid of that let's see what happens let's import okay there we go now you can see that this is a promise void there we go there we are nicely and now i pass the id through to that so i basically binded the id that we passed in down as a prop into our delete translation action so that way i get the id directly here without any doing any form data wizardry or anything like that so now once we have that i'm going to firstly say that you know not everyone should be able to access this so i'm going to protect it very simply by adding in auto protect so you can see the benefit that i'm trying to get across now with using cluck uh, core 2.0 it's just so clean honestly really really nice now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the user id and then I'm going to go ahead and say const the user and the user is returned after we to make the removal. But I'm going to create a little helper function called remove translation. It's going to take the user ID, uh, which will be absolutely be, you know, uh, present here because you were protected. So we'll have to have that so I can ensure that we have it. And then after all of that, I'm going to revalidate the tag to ensure that we update the user. Right. So ensure that, that, that we update the uh, details on the front end to revalidate the tag. So boom, next catch. You can also revalidate a path entirely, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make it very simple. After all of that, I'm going to return translations, which is stringifying the user translations. Right. But let's create this helper function. So this helper function is inside of models. So we're going to go ahead and create a new helper function. So inside of our models user, let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to go down to our bottom and we're going to type in I'm going to bring in the uh, the signature of the header. So in this case, boom, it's going to be uh, it takes a user ID and a translation ID and then it returns a promise as a user. So first things first is connect to the DB. And remember that has a defensive statement which stops it from, you know, if it doesn't work. So we say try catch around it. And then the first instance, well, firstly, if it all fails and it goes like, you know, heads up, then we're going to go ahead and pop in an error tag. Right. And then if but if it doesn't fail, then we're going to, you know, all right, we're going to try this first. We're going to find one and update. Now, here's the key part. OK, so in this case, we're going to use this user find one and update function. If you highlight over this, it automatically finds the first document that matches the filter that we pass in and applies the update. Now, here's the interesting part. So this is the filter finds the user with a given user ID. So it'll match against the user ID. The next bit is pull. Now pull is the interesting part. Pull is basically we pass in, you know, what we what we're trying to pull from it. So this will go into the translations collection and it will find the document with that translation ID and pull it from it. So essentially removing the translation with the given ID. And then we can do new true as a third options parameter to basically return the updated document because, you know, in typical use, in typical flows, we want to return the updated document in case you don't want to do a refetch or you want to do a tan stack sort of approach to things, right? Now, the next step that we can do is we can simply say if there is no user, we can go ahead and say use not found. Otherwise, we can do a translation uh, remove. So in this case, oh, what did I do here? Sorry. Don't do that. It should be in the try. And then there you go. Okay, so in this case, if there's no user, then we throw the error, otherwise translation was removed and we return the user. Now, if all was done well, we simply just import this. I'm confident because we're revalidating the tag. And as simple as that, guys, now, because we've done inside of our translation history, let's go back to here. I passed in the ID of the translation ID. So then now this will work. I guarantee this will work. So hello world one, two, four. If I click it, it will remove that from the database. Let me pop my server logs up here because it's a server action that's going to go ahead and happen. So let's go ahead and clear it. Hello world124, already connected to MongoDB. Boom, it went ahead and did it and it removed it from the database. So you can see, look at that, it says translation removed and it returned the new user. And again, I'm logging this out for you know debugging, but you can feel free to not log out if you don't want to. So let hello world123, got rid of it. Hello mundo, if we can get rid of this German one. And now we've got a full, you know, crud setup. So in this case, let's get, uh, let's go papa found 123 And again, it still all works, nothing's broken. If I said, yo, what is up guys? And then you see debounce, boom, there you go. Nice, and I can carry on deleting. Look at that, perfect. Works really, really great stuff. Okay, the next thing is this submit button sucks. I don't like it. I'd never have liked it. I wanna have something a bit cleaner. So let's go ahead and update that button. So now over here, the submit button. So heading back over to translation form, 
we're going to go ahead and create something called a submit form a submit button but this submit button is going to do something pretty cool because it's a child of a form i can do something pretty cool with this by tapping into something called the use form status so i'm going to go ahead and create something called a submit button component so submit button dot tsx dot tsx and i'm going to do rfce boom and now this is going to be a use a, a client component like so and inside of this guys what we're going to do is it's simply going to be a submit button and i'm going to pass in a disabled prop because we're going to have the ability to say if it's disabled or not and i'm going to go ahead and import two things use form status and the button from our ui library and then i'm simply going to return Firstly, I'm going to get the pending state. So what this does, guys, is this, if you have a child component, uh, if you have a client component, which is a child of a form, which is using a server action. OK, so you have a server component, which is firing off a server action. If inside of your form, you have a child component, which is, for example, in this case, a yeah, it could be anything, actually. But in this case, I'm using it as a submit button because it's a child client component you can tap into something called the use form status and i can check if the form is actually pending so if i'm submitting and it's pending the sort of you know the server action and then when it comes back pending will be false so i can actually tap into that and do things accordingly to that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and say the following rather than rendering this out i'm going to say a button type submit disabled or if if it's disabled or if it's pending and I'm going to basically pass in the appropriate. And if it's pending, I'm going to say translating. Otherwise, just translate. Get rid of that now. I go into here. And what I'm actually going to do now is this submit button. I still need this, guys, because we actually use it for the debounce, right? But what I can do here is I can make this a self-enclosed. Um, oops. I can make this a self-enclosed component. And I can actually say it's just hidden. So it's a hidden submit button. So it's still technically there. For the dom to actually go ahead and you know click it but instead now i'm going to do submit button and have this right which is a lot better and i'm going to say the disabled is going to be if there is no input and guys look at this look at this firstly if there is no input uh so if i get rid of the input look at that oh nice All right and i'm going to go ahead and just style this a little bit to give it a bit of spacing margin top of five flex and it should be justify on the end and look at that by default on a phone it's full width otherwise on look at that oh so nice all right now i want to show you guys something look pay attention to this if i type in hello world translating oh look at that nice guys and if i type change it to be like you know german for example and i do translate hello what and you see how it just everything flows in the way that it should right and that's how you know good development is like now i'm not worried if i'm going to break something else i just know it's going to work if i revalidate a tag it's going to refetch where it needs to refetch this is good development okay smash that like button as well guys honestly this build was way more than we originally thought right so this is like a huge learning curve to add to your portfolio uh, i promise you it's a big one that you want to add so just teaching so many skills here honestly it's crazy so while we're done now with this part i'm going to go ahead and add in the next step which is essentially to add in the firstly the speaking out and the, the ability to speak into the microphone okay so let's do that right now so the recorder is what we wanted to do next so the recorder i had listed over here inside of our translation form so i'm going to create this component and we're going to slowly build it out okay and then I'm also going to have this speaking element as well. So firstly, I mean, let's do the speaking element first. I think the speaking element will be a bit easier to get out of the way. So I'm going to do that one first. So I'm actually going to have the play audio. Let's see, uh, in my second, before my text area. Yep. So here I'm going to have a button and this button is going to be a button and it's going to have just a very few simple things inside of it it's going to be a variant of a ghost so it's going to you know there's a couple of variants you have out of the box and we're going to fire off a play audio function and then all this is going to have is something called a volume two icon so volume two icon right and in this case boom like so now this is going to have a little bit of styling and a size of 24 so i'm going to pop that in right now so there we go boom and let's go ahead and pop that in and now we need to create this play audio so 
This right here is going to be a function. So if I go ahead and get rid of this, you'll see that it's going to be there for now, right? And I obviously style that out because it's not ideal. That's not where it needs to be. So in this case now, I'm going to go ahead and um, let me just go ahead and put a song back on. Um, so in this case, boom, we've got this. So if I type in now into this, you see how there you go. So they, like I can, it's not disabled if that's the case, right? So I just need to add in a play audio function. So over here now, I'm going to create a function called play audio. So let's go up to the top. I'm simply going to say const play audio equals, and it's an asynchronous function. And this is going to basically have the following. Now I'm going to make this one pretty simple. Right, so all we're going to do here is we're going to say synth equals window dot speech synthesis. This is using a uh, API, and if you watch my last build from the Siri Assistant clone, you will know how this works really nicely. Right, so I've actually allowed you to have different options in that build to select the voice and that kind of thing. In this instance, I'm just making it very simple by having a default voice that is used from your web API. Right, so in this case, if there's no output or there's no synth, return defensive programming statement, and then I'm going to simply have the words to say so. In this case, we have new speech synthesis utterance. And what this basically does is it basically allows me to pass in some text and then I can simply go ahead and say to the synth object, speak out whatever I have here. And that will do exactly what we think it will do. So if I go ahead and do speech uh, say, so in this case, if I type in hello there, like that. Now, if I go ahead and type in holla, so let's do something like German and do translate. So now let's do this. And now if I type in, uh, let me turn the audio up here. Hello. There Hello. You there you go. Hello. That's it. Perfect. So now we've got the web speech API side of things, right? So awesome stuff. Hello. Right. Amazing, amazing stuff. So in this case, we've got there. Hello. Right. And then if I type in hello, one, two, three. Hello, 123. <laughs> it's not 123, but that's fine. It still works, right? So there you go. Look, we've already got that working nicely, right? So you've got a simple version of that out and working the way you expect it. And now I just need to style that accordingly. So what I'm going to do is actually wrap the second div. So in this case, where we have the second text area. So the, between the button and the select, I'm going to have a div around all of that. So I'm going to cut that outside the second button, pop it there as well. And here I'm simply going to have a flex container, um, which if I show you here, as I go ahead and save flex items should be centrally aligned just to be sure and then justify the space between. And now you can see, look at that. Boom. Hello, 123. Boom. And then it goes ahead and blanks out if it's not. There you go. We have the speaking functionality down. All right. So in that case, with the web speech API, it's been implemented. The next step, guys, is actually the uh, I'm going to do the um, the ability to speak into the microphone. So in this case, I'm going to show you here, for example, a quick demo. So here, if I was to type in. Let's do it right now. Hello, world one, two, three. And now you can see that this one would say hello world one, two, three. Okay. And again, I've logged out of my 3001. So ignore that. But the point was, is that you saw how it would typically work, right? So in the actual row build, this is going to work. So I'll show you right now how to do it. Okay. So the recorder, let's do it. So I'm going to have a recorder component here. So we have a recorder and a upload, upload audio function. Now here I'm going to have an upload audio function. And this is going to be passed through. And there's a reason why we have to do it this way, because I'm going to have a few things that I'm going to interact with from this component, which will help us out a little bit. Now, this recorder right here, let's go ahead and just pop in like a dummy sort of uh, a dummy signature. So in this case, asynchronous and it takes a blob. Now, blob is typically a file. Uh, Abo, thank you so much. He goes, thank you for the awesome builds, honey. I love all your builds. There's always something to learn from it. Even if it's little, you're doing amazing work by bringing high quality content and fully functional builds. Thank you so much, Abo. I appreciate you. Every build has a little gem in it. That's my goal. It always teaches something new in each of these builds. So I'm so grateful that you see all of that. Thank you so much, man. So for this upload audio, 
we're now going to go ahead and um, do the following. So firstly, I'm just going to prepare two things and then I'm going to start building the recorder. So I'm just going to have a MIME type. So this is going to be the type of file. And then we're going to prepare a file based on the blob that we pass in. So in this case, we just create a new file with the data, the audio, uh, in this case, MIME type. So here you can actually just say MIME type. So MIME type, there we go. And the type MIME type, okay. Now, after this, we're going to actually, um, let's do the recorder first, okay? So at this point, recorder, let's create a recorder.tsx component, RFCE, boom. And this one is going to be a use client component. Now for the recorder, we've got a few things. Well, firstly, we need gonna have a MIME type. Now you can actually make this consistent by importing that into the previous file where we used it. That's probably a better idea. And then for here, we're gonna have upload, upload audio. I'm just gonna pop it in because I've got the signature down here. Upload audio, and um, remember the signature, same thing for that. Again, you can have the type of the previous file and import that in. So that's another way of doing it as well. Now in this one, we've got a couple of things that are gonna happen, guys. We've actually got um, a few, a few, there's quite a lot of things actually happening here. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think about how I can show you this. I'm gonna show you all of it and, and, and then I'm gonna sort of break it down. Okay, let's do that. So first things first, let's go ahead and get a little bit of a div, a little bit of styling set up, right? So first thing what we're gonna do is have a mic icon with a little bit of styling underneath it. Yo, thank you so much, Abo. I appreciate you so much, dude. $20 donation by Abo, my guy. Thank you so much, man. Huge. Uh, I'm gonna go to my page translate, uh, not this one, sorry. Uh, translation form, where's the recorder? Go on and pop that in, boom, like so, okay? So we should see, there we go, little microphone, right? And now with that, I can go ahead and start styling now. I don't know what happened here. What the heck is that happening? Doom, doom, doom. All right. And again, as I mentioned before, guys, if you are getting stuck at any point here, remember the first link in the description, fill out that form, put in your company name, which is just your personal name if you don't have a company. And the first link, once you get through to that, will be all of the code from today's build. So if you're getting stuck at any point, remember, you can go ahead, fill out that form, first link in the description, GitHub repo is right there. That'll give you access to everything that I'm doing right now in case you get a little bit lost behind. Okay. Now, I'm going to have a sort of a quick step, which will say get permission. Now, if you don't have permission here, we have to collect permission from the user. So I'm not going to focus too much on the UI here for this part, but all I'm doing is I'm having a user effect, which basically gets the microphone permission from the user. Now, all I do here for this function, again, I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. It's more of an explanation step here is because it's not too much of a fancy thing happening. It's just a function. And we basically check if the media recorder is in the window or not. We try something. We basically go ahead and say, navigator, get user media. This is where it pops up saying, can we access your uh, your audio, right? And if you put in video as well, we'll ask to access your video as well. Now, after that, we're gonna have two bits of state, which will, ca will capture the permission and the stream. So what we do here, this is a media stream API. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in like so. So let's pop in our use state. So we have the permission now and we have the stream, okay? So those two things are there ready. So now once we have this, this will go ahead and say get microphone. But in this case, I've already allowed it to have access to the microphone. So in this case, you can see it's microphone allowed. So it got rid of that. Otherwise, if you click it, it would say get the microphone. And also by having the use effect here, it would automatically pop up the first time that you go ahead and actually do it as well. So a little bit of a little, just nice little trick there. Okay, the next step is if it's pending, then we're gonna go ahead and say recording, otherwise stop the recording, okay? So underneath this, we're gonna have pending. Now, if where is pending coming from? Well, pending is actually a use form status. Now, in my demo right now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not going to do the pending state because the recorder component is not inside the form action. But if you wanted to, you could actually go ahead and pop all of this inside there like so and that would actually work the way we want it to so i'm actually going to do that right now in hindsight I should have done that so in this case we can pop the form action like so out of there in there and now because it's a child of recorder it should get exactly what we wanted which is perfect right so i don't know why i didn't do that i'm going to push that to the main repo afterwards as well so inside of this uh recorder now as well 
So now this will have pending, yep. So pending will work the way we want it. So recording status, uh, we do not have. Recording status currently will have the following. It'll be recording status, there you go, you stay. And then this one I'm gonna have as, it'll either be active, inactive, or so you can, you can actually add type definitions for that if you would like. I'm gonna keep it again, pretty quick and simple here. Now, underneath for the UI, we're gonna check against two conditions. One, if we have permission and the recording status is inactive and it's not pending, then we're gonna have a button which says speak, okay? And this will trigger off a function called start recording. And now if it is recording, we're simply gonna have another button which will say stop recording, okay? So now we're gonna create two dummy, uh, not dummy functions, actual functions for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a function called start recording. So the start recording function essentially will look something like this. And then I'm gonna have the same thing for a stop recording. So now we should stop seeing the error. So now you can see speak or vice versa, right? So firstly, to style it up a little bit so it's a bit nicer. I'm just gonna add a simple di a div style here, which is gonna have an internary uh, operator here, which basically says flex, centers everything. And then if you're recording, it changes the background to red and so forth. But you can see that it lines everything up. If I click it, it will say stop, stopping recording. Uh, there you go, why does it say stopping recording? Why is, that's, that's ugly, stopping recording. Um, people gonna say, should say stop recording. There you go. So if I do hello world, boom. Okay, so in this case, ignore this. This is bad right now. We will fix that. Okay. Now, after this, the start recording button, we're gonna go ahead and tap into this. So for start recording, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the recording status and we're gonna go ahead and check a uh, little defensive programming. If we haven't got a stream to, we don't have permission and we don't have a pending state, then we're gonna return. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start recording from the user's microphone. So the way we do that is we use it the following, media recorder.current. Now, if you're wondering where the heck is the media recorder, well, we just create it at the top over here, like so. And we have a user ref, like so. Now, the media recorder, as I mentioned before, is when we get the permission for the microphone, okay? So in this case, we'll have it there. And then the way you collect data is you actually collect it in something called chunks. So when you actually collect the audio, it's collected in chunks. Now, when the data is available, all we do is we essentially just push those chunks together. So basically, as and when the data is available through the recording, it just we just push the chunks. Eventually, we have a uh, like an array of that audio file. And then we're gonna set the audio chunks to be a piece of state. Okay, so the audio chunks will simply be a piece of state here, like so. Okay, and then when we hit the stop recording button, all we're gonna do is similar to that, we're gonna basically check firstly for a little defensive programming statement, and then we're gonna set the recording status to inactive, and I'm also gonna tap into the stop function, so in this case, let him. I'm gonna stop the uh, recording, and then on stop, we're gonna tap into the function, we're gonna say create a new audio blob, Right, and this audio blob is gonna be this right here. So create a new audio blob, and it's gonna be basically a file representation of that audio. And then we're gonna upload the audio. So this is the file that we passed in as a prop. And then we're gonna set the audio chunks to blank again after it's done, okay? So the upload audio now is where the magic will happen, okay? So if we go to our upload audio file, so if we go to translation form, this is essentially where it's all happening now. So the upload audio is where all the magic will happen. So if we go to play, um, sorry, translation form, this is where we essentially need to do everything. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna mimic it as in a form. So we're gonna make a post request, but firstly, I'm gonna create a basically a fake form data, not a fake, but like a, a form data instance. And I'm gonna append to that form an item called audio. And that's just gonna be the file. Okay, and this is basically how we do post REST API requests, right? So I'm basically gonna make a post request and pass the form data inside of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a response. Uh, I'm gonna do const response equals await fetch, transcribe audio. So I need to make this endpoint. I'm gonna push it as a post request and it's gonna be a form data, okay? Now, once that's done, the text will come back once we've created that. And if there was data, if there was text inside of the response, I'm gonna set the input. So basically what will happen is, 
I will be able to talk. It will go ahead and it will uh, go ahead and make a request to transcribe audio, which will connect to Whisper, you know, AI, transcribe it, come back with some text. Then that will go ahead and pop it in here. This will then trigger the debounce that we saw here because the input would have changed and then it would submit it by uh, automatically. You see what I mean? Like, what the? Like, that's how you do some nice stuff in coding. Like, when it just works like that, oof, so nice. All right, so in this case, like, we're gonna go ahead and create the uh, transcribe audio uh, endpoint. Okay, so transcribe audio. And now what we're doing, guys, is we are creating, so if I do route.ts, we are creating the whisper AI integration segment. Okay, so now this will essentially be creating, this is where I go ahead and I send the audio to um, Azure OpenAI. So essentially what I need to do firstly, is I need to install Azure OpenAI. So this is where we basically are interacting with Azure OpenAI services. So I'm going to go ahead and do npm i Azure OpenAI, like so. Yeah. And then we've got the key credentials and all that stuff, which I'll show you how to do in a second. We also want to get the next response here as well. Now I need to get the form data. So remember we passed it through as the audio file. So what we need to do to get the actual audio through. So whenever you send audio across a post request like that, easiest way through a form data, do a wait request.form data, get the audio as a file, and then you go ahead and you can console log it to debug to make sure that you're actually getting the file sent through, which is what I would do to make sure you're correct. Now what I would do is I would check to get, make sure all the Azure credentials are present. So check all your process, you know, environment keys, make sure everything is set. And this is all gonna be the stuff that we set earlier on. And I'm also gonna check if the file size is zero. If the file size is zero, I'm gonna return sender and respond saying, yep, nothing came back. Okay, and at this point, I don't actually check against sender and responses, that kind of thing. I mean, here you can really change this up to be text, nothing, text could be blank and so forth. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, basically, I need to convert my file into a, a format which, you know, um, is expected by the open AI client. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my file, tran translate it to an array buffer, which is like a string of text basically, uh, make it a new UI, uint8 array. So basically this, just think of this as one long sequence of characters, okay? And then what we do is we create a client instance of open AI. So in this case, boom, we say open a new open AI client and we pass in the endpoint, we pass in our key credentials, which is our API key. Again, we set all this up in the beginning. And then we basically go ahead and say await client dot get audio transcription. We push it to the deployment name, we push the audio that we're trying to get the transcription for. And then if all went well, guys, we should get the transcription as result.txt. In which case we simply go ahead and return a next response with the JSON of text result.txt. Right, so in this case, like so. And you'll notice as well, I did a root handler earlier. I sh probably should have actually returned this as a next uh, response to be honest with you. So in this case, it's just do a quick little refactoring job. Yeah, so in this case, I did that here. So this should ideally just, just to keep things nicely, should do it like that. That's nice one, okay? Just in case you're wondering to get all the correct headers and everything. So in this case, next response, JSON result. Uh, there we go, result.txt. So now let's give it a try. Let's see if it works. So the way I will know if this works is because inside of here now, we'll hit the transcribe audio and you're probably wondering, but why did you have to do a absolute URL earlier? Because when you're in a server component, guys, you have to basically, because you're on the server, it doesn't know what the what the URL is that it's trying to reach. Whereas if you're on a client, it already knows the host URL, the referral URL. So you can just go ahead and say forward slash the current URL. Whereas if you're on a server, think about it, you're in the server instances, it could be loads of different things that can go wrong. And you saw an absolute URL. So that's why I went ahead and said, if in the dev environment, use localhost, Otherwise, use the Vassell URL. So that's that's why you go ahead and do that step. So let's give this a try now, guys. I'm going to go ahead and mute my audio and sort of let's see if it works. Yo, what is going on, guys? It's your boy, Papa React. And today we are building a Google Translate 2.0 clone. If all this worked well, smash the like button. Hit stop. And now wait for it. Wait for it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it's doing it. Is it doing anything? Did it do anything? Okay. It didn't do it. So why did it not do it so let's have a look what went on so if we go down here an error occurred and the error seems to be in azure credentials not set okay 
So I simply have not passed in my Azure credentials. So at this point, you would have to, oh my goodness, I made such a stupid mistake earlier. Okay, I know why. Oh, I made a stupid mistake, guys. Um, so here we needed the actual, um, I actually did something quite, okay, I did something really stupid there. Okay, so we got to go to translate, uh, transcribe audio here, right? So completions name undefined i don't need this in this build for completions right we just needed the azure deployment so we don't actually need that because remember earlier i got rid of the completions in the code we don't actually need that so now let's give it a try and i promise you this will work okay take two <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and say yo what is going on guys welcome to the google translate 2.0 build if everything went well i need you to smash the like button and subscribe right now and don't forget to turn on the bell icon bell notification icon okay so now it should be transcribing it oh look at that boom ah nice and then it says stop recording at that point so i want to change one thing that i did not like um but firstly that worked really well so look yo what's going welcome to google Translate. if everyone well, i need you to smash like button subscribe right now and don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon. oh my goodness what the hell that is so sick yeah that is so nice i swear to god um the only thing i didn't like there was the pending state so uh in the button so in the recorder when we had the pending state it said recording so it was where was it let's try again it was uh, let me see what i said so hello world one two three stop recording All right so stop recording so pending recording if it was pending okay so here i'm not too fussed to be honest with you if it says this or not so i think we can probably safely even remove this i think Let's give this a try one more time. So, hello world, one, two, three. Okay, so, recording. So, at this point, it's getting rid of that. So, I've done it slightly different in my one. Uh, I've done it as recording status is recording. Okay, so, we can now do, it wouldn't have to be if it's recording or not. It could just be if it's, translating so translating so translating let's try that now so what's going on guys one two three okay and if i do something like hello world that will still tap in that's the thing so you do okay so because it's tapping into the overall submission um Hmm. Okay. So it's more a case of if it's recording and so if it's not recording and otherwise it could be inactive. Okay. So inactive recording. So we could have a third state to capture this, but right now, for example, it's just going to go ahead and say translating on here as well. You can do this if you want. I'm not too crazy about this, to be honest with you. I think in this instance, I would be happy to remove the pending um for me it's not really an absolute must but you can feel free i hope that kind of cleared up what i was trying to say but for the pending state here to be honest with you we can go ahead and simplify our code oops i don't actually like the pending state in this example here but you can feel free to mess around with it yourself so pending is out um let's give that a try now so if i do Hello world, one, two, three. This is a YouTube demo. Smash that like button if you enjoy the video. And now you can see it will be going ahead and boom. This is, look at that, perfect, nice. And look at, just like, honestly guys, I, so fast. That is using the Whisper AI translation service from Azure. So Azure OpenAI, uh, we've deployed a model, which is the Whisper model. And then it's going ahead and then basically taking my speech, inputting that, returning the speech through a, a route handler was in the API input that we created. It populates the input field. The input field debounces, which then goes ahead and, and submits the form, which goes ahead and hits the Azure AI translate uh, API and then it goes ahead and translates it and then it MongoDB pushes it into our database, revalidates the tag, which causes the refetch to happen, and boom, it happens the way we expect it. Just easy, right? Like super, super simple. I'm joking. It is, I know it's a step, it's a few things that happen, but honestly, it's so much power 
it's just so good like it's so powerful i love this like next js is going in such a cool direction right now and uh, i just think it's the way to go and again like if any of this seems like overwhelming remember the first link in the description has all the code for today's video and i again will stress this point over and over again i teach all of this down to such a granular level inside of zero to full stack hero like this is really where everything that i just spoke about if you want to feel so confident in it like then the place to be is zero to full stack hero. Like we've got OGs in the course right now who literally know how to answer this stuff and talk about this stuff like through thick and through. Like, and as and when it's released, I'm constantly practicing in the community. That's the first place I go to before I get ready for the live stream. So like, if you are really wanting to dial in, I do recommend you check that out, right? So without further ado, I think we're actually, I think we just conquered the build guys. Absolutely crazy stuff. Let me go ahead and get rid of this one. Look at that, boom, it works, right? We've got the speech working. Sahib saying, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate you, man. The, everything's working on this front. If we go ahead and sign out, the only thing I haven't done is the uh, the root the home page so let's do this then we're going to deploy and then we're going to destroy that like button because it was absolutely you know this build was absolutely sick today so i'm going to go to your page uh and then the page honestly is very I, i've done this and like very quickly the home page this one was more to showcase the routing and the differences with the routing but in this case we've got the we're going to have a h1 very simple bit of text and styling here boom and they understand your world and communicate across languages all right so super super simple stuff here at the top i'm going to have a flex flex column with the items centrally aligned all right um so i okay i'm going to shout this one out somebody goes but in india web dev is too saturated no job for freshers absolute rubbish i'm sorry i'm calling you out that is rubbish these kind that mindset will get you zero nowhere i have developers from india as well they're they're amazing developers this is a it's about your skill and about what you're willing to put in do not let anyone ever tell you that the job market is too saturated for development it's just a cop-out answer i'm sorry it is there is so much there to you that you can go ahead and learn it's, it's enough to do so in this case I'm adding in the user authentications by putting in the following. Yeah, Harper says, I agree. I don't know if he's agreeing with me or, or if he's agreeing with the person, but there you go. Okay, now I'm simply gonna check. If the user exists, I'm gonna have a link to translate now. Otherwise, if the user is not logged in, I'm gonna have a sign in button. Now I'm gonna import all of these components. So I'm gonna input a sign in button. Yeah, Harper says, um, with Sunny, it's about skill 100%, 100%. And I want to call that out because I see so many people freaking out about this, guys, and it's just not worth it. Like, don't freak about it. Freak out. And Lauren says, if you have the dedication to learn, keep up. Exactly. Like, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of trying. You have to keep up with the trend. You have to keep moving fast, right? So I know I talked over this point, but honestly, it's just very simple UI stuff. Like, you can go feel free to copy that yourself. If I go ahead and sign in to get look at that. Oh, my God. Clerk is so clean. Like, that is just so unreal. If you've ever done auth manually, you know the straight, like, the post oh it's just so good like if i go to team.popreact.com i don't know if it's gonna ask me to sign in okay so let me do that now uh it's going to popreact.team maybe a separate account i want to show you that it's, it's actually linked to a separate person let's see boom now we go to the forward slash translate let's go to translate now uh da, da, da. okay and we're here and now if i type in hello world we should see boom translating and then you see how it goes no translations yet to boom look at that oh and then we go and delete it oh, so nice yo what is going on guys this is a quick test let's see if it works quick test debounced boom nice right and look at this this does work by the way i can show you uh if i do like you know, I don't know chinese let's do um hello how is it going this is a youtube test smash that like button if you haven't already and look at that, just so clean, so, so clean. And look at that, it picks it all up. It detects your language, just so nice. Honestly, amazing stuff. So you guys upgrade your skill if you want to stand out. Uh, there you go, <laughs> there you go, nice stuff, okay? So look at that, it works super clean. You can go ahead and you, like straight from what we've done right now, you can go ahead and manage all of your accounts. Uh, I'm probably going to do that as well. But yeah, you can see all of this. Look at that, really, really clean stuff. And it just looks so professional. I would definitely recommend adding this to your portfolio and I'd definitely list out all of the skills in which you actually um, like demonstrate during this because there's a huge list of skills that we covered in this build. So you definitely want to go ahead and list those out as well. It's not just a Google Translate clone by itself. You see there's so much happening. 
We're using like four different Azure services. We're using Cluck for the authentication. We're using so many Next.js under the hood, things like server action, server components, client components, route handlers, all the stuff to basically go ahead and get what we want working. And it just works in such a nice harmonious way. Like I mentioned before, when you know you make a change on the server action, you revalidate because of the mutation, you re revalidate the tags, it causes the other fetch to go ahead and refetch. Like if you can explain all of this and show the same level of passion, I swear to God, you will just you will get that job at some point right if somebody came to me with that energy i would be like oh my god take it like a hundred percent run with that like um so yeah we definitely got a, a ton to to go ahead and uh and, and and work with right so let's go ahead and right now deploy so the final step is the deployment process now i haven't actually deployed this because i i haven't um so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it right now so this will actually go ahead and be an interesting thing to do uh if the if it takes over 10 seconds for any, um, you know, a route handler or API endpoint or server action, if it's over 10 seconds, it's always worth mentioning that it will fail on the free Vercel plan until you upgrade to the Blaze plan or, or Pro plan, whatever it is. All right, so right now I've already installed the Vercel CLI, so I'm gonna type in Vercel. And this will go ahead and say, set up and deploy a build. So yes, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do Sunny Sanger, link to existing project, no. I'm gonna have all the defaults by standard where it's at. And this will fail initially because we don't have the, um, click no. We do not have the environment variable set up. So what I'm gonna do is click on inspect, click on open, and I want you to go over here, head over to, head over to this right here and go to settings and go to environment variables. Now, what I want you to do, go into your environment variables here and you thought I was gonna slip and I wasn't gonna do it. So I want you to click on environment variables, copy all of your values right now. I'm not doing, I'm not showing you my screen because of that exact reason. Otherwise you're gonna see everything. And then um, we're gonna go over to the key and value pairs. I'm gonna paste everything, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in all of the keys um, inside of my code. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that's fine. And then I'm gonna click on save, all right? So I've gone ahead and done that, pushed it in and I hit save and then, so literally what I did is I, did this and command V to paste and then it pastes them in and I click save and then it saves them into your uh, into your Vercel deployment right so now we've got the environment set up so what you can do now is go ahead and do this is going to fail as well so I, I guarantee there's a build step that's failing so if we do Vercel build I can show it we can debug it locally so if I do Vercel build now I guarantee it's like something small happening um, Okay, let's give it a try. It's gonna probably be a TypeScript issue. It's always a TypeScript issue. Let's see what happens. Sonny, my brother, you got to announce these things. I had no idea again. Uh, awesome, don't worry about it. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. Uh, oh, I had no idea again. Oh, that I was live. Yeah, I sent out an email. So feel free to sign up to the email newsletter. Minash goes, when Net Netlify is recently nice, the next one time V5 is near enough on part of the cell worth checking it. Oh, nice. I have a look at that. So you can, has an invalid export. So my transcribe audio has an invalid export. So transcribe audio. Let's have a look. So promise next response string is not a valid post return type. So let's see what's going on here. I'm returning text string sender is not valid post return time. Okay, I see. So uh, expected void response bonus where I got response next void string. Okay, so in this case, we, I mean, that's a bit strange to be honest with you. I think, does it return? It's not a body, you know, it's the, oh no. Um, Expected void response got no, 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 no. Oh, sender. Oh, okay. My bad. Um, yes, because here is the exact reason why. So I'm actually returning a stupid thing here. So here, what we should do is return a, you know, something like, I mean, you could do it that way. I don't like that way. That's not good. Let's not do that. Yeah. Let's do, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, get rid of this as well. Return. Next JS Sean, Jason, Expert. yeah, we got that spell. And same here, I wanna do a Azure, there you go, nice. All right, so we can do something like this, that's cleaner. 
And now if we do have a cell build. So this is why it's good having TypeScript. You know, they actually catch you out on a lot of bad things. Loop legs, those good stuff, Papa Fam. If you guys are enjoying this right now, that's all I ask is you just destroy the like button. That's it. Destroy the like button. And um I see, I see, I have not been in my email for a few days. Yeah, I know. I'm trying my best to get the best way to kind of, you know, notify everyone. But there you go. Look at that. Boom. We've gone ahead and deployed it. So I'm going to do Vassell now to, I've, well, I've done a Vassell. I've done a local build. But if I do a Vassell, it will push to production now. So let's give this a go. We won't actually push to production. It'll push to like a controlled environment. And then I can, from there, push to production by either doing a promote to production or I do the cell dash dash prod when I do the CLI command. But guys, we're absolutely killing it right now. I swear to God, this is going really well. Um, let's give it two seconds to go ahead and finish up with this. Let's see what it does here. Boom. Quick little water break while we're waiting. But remember guys, it helps out so much from both sides if you hit that first link in the description because not only are you getting the code by filling out the Microsoft form and getting access to all of the code as well as my course right here, but it also goes ahead and shows Microsoft that our Papa Fam support is absolutely huge. And that's what we need to do to keep the support from companies like Microsoft our way, right? So it really helps out a long way. And same with the guys over at Clark as well. Um, okay, we've got a weird little expected, unexpected error there, which is interesting. Um, I think, okay, anyway, it got past that. Super weird. Um, let's carry on. I think it must have restarted the compiler, but there you go. It's managed to get past that. And we even got our middleware deployments, which is awesome. Deploying outputs. Nice. Viber background music and watch something live build is fire. I love that, dude. Thank you so much. Is there any special way to deploy clerk to production? I believe not. I believe it's just completely fine just to off the bat work in the way it is. Let's go ahead and try this out. Now, again, I haven't tried this out in production yet, so we're going to see if it works, right? Let's go ahead and check out. So sign in to get translating. Boom. Let me hide this for this session. Da, 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 da. Disable for this. There you go. Sign in to get translating. Boom. Sign in with Google. Let's see, guys. Sunny.sanger. Let's sign in. Is it going to work? Okay. So we've got an error here. Now, uh, there's probably a safe reason why, but let's give it a little uh check on that so if we go over here we can go ahead and have a look i think it's going to be something very straightforward and simple to be honest with you so here we are and error incurred the performance of that. okay is a image digest property is resolved failed to pass url from at request dependencies blah, blah, blah five lines url okay so invalid url so the reason being is because we're trying to push to a forward slash translate Okay, I see. So this is happening because of our after post request URL. So I can show you why this is actually the case. So I'm I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure this is the case. Uh, local host. Let me just double check. This is my little debug in in live. You guys are gonna see for yourself. So this right here. Okay. Now. Uh, I believe where we have that sign in button or after sign in, yeah, so after sign in URL, so here. These are all server components, so it makes sense why this error might be coming up. So, what we might have to do here is do a const URL and do a forward slash translate. And then we simply do that. And now the URL would be something along the lines of this. Because remember, like I mentioned before, it's going to be on a server component, so we need to give absolute URLs, right? So again, maybe the same thing is gonna happen here as well. Let's go ahead and do the same URL. And then let's go ahead and give it uh, the same uh, respect. Okay. And again, what I would recommend here is you just make a helper function, but for the simplicity of this demo, I think it's okay. Let's go ahead and do the same thing uh, here. Okay, and then let's do the same. Okay, we're good. So let's do a redeployment and try again. Let's go. See what I mean? A live debug in. This is what I like, right? This is scary for me, trust me, right? But uh, it's the way to go because you guys get to see how I would debug it live. And obviously, there's no truth. There's no actually like, I don't know if this is going to work. This, but this is how we debug. That's the reality of debugging. So let's go ahead and see how that works. 
And again, in the meantime, while that's deploying, guys, zero to full stack hero is a way to go. I'm going to rave about this so much because, you know, everything that we talked about today, right? Like, I can't show you in just simple videos. We need long, you know, really deep coaching calls. And this is what we do, guys. Weekly live coaching. So honestly, I'm in those coaching calls weekly. You can see from some of our students as well, right? Like, I'm going to go ahead and just play this as well. Right away. I mean, I'm like, but I can't like, even keep up. This is our own students, guys. Not, yep, you can. Not, What's up, dude? Diamond, Good to see you. Right. you. Give us a solution. So when we go back to our laptop to work, it's like, it's easy. I can say it's among of the best like, programming channels. This I is what I mean. Sometimes I have These are real people. These are real students of ours. I post a question and uh, the community is all over there to help me. And, and, and this is what I'm saying, guys, like over and over and over again. It's about community it's about mentorship it doesn't matter if you just watch a video and for one day you may know something or you might learn something more that's cool that's great there's so many channels on youtube which help with that but it's about that constant mentorship right constantly growth constant development it's not just about getting that one win and then you know or just keeping up with the latest trending video which is why i love other youtubers who do this stuff but i honestly preach that you need to be able to be on it and growing every single week not just watching a video i think that's cool and then leaving it you need deep deep learning moments like for example in these coaching calls every single week we have honestly the deepest dives into different areas in tech so i will literally be showcasing so many things at the deepest level it's ridiculous so the third link in the description will take you to the course zero to four second paparia.com forward slash course like i said weekly coaching calls we go through all of the things in depth if you want to get a sneak peek you can actually get the react basics for free if you click on this button right here and uh yeah honestly this is this is where we go guys this is the main thing uh somebody some people are saying the cost you can go feel free to check it out uh over at paparia.com forward slash course click on enroll now and you'll be able to go ahead and do it so even yep you can go you know it's hard to find a community like this, hence why I'm still here. Exactly. If you click enroll now, you see the different pricing structures. And what I would say is, guys, I always get the question of like, oh my God, it can be considered expensive. But really, our guys have got like, our guys and girls, our students have got like full jobs off of this. If you think about it, you will spend like upwards of 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. I think I spent 60,000 in university fees. And if there was a course like this, I would be like, why didn't I just... Why don't I just pay for that? And I get a lifetime membership as well. And it's part of a community. I'm not alone. Like there's so many benefits. This is why I've tried to rebuild the education system around coding. This is why we kind of push around this area a lot more. So it's a, it's nothing in the grand scheme of the value you get. I kid you not. It's ridiculous for live coaching as well. Like every week, I don't know, like, if you can't put up on that side of things, I would say, you know, there's so much, you know, free stuff that goes on on YouTube. I do it literally in this video today. But I always say, like, elevate and just be a part of a circle, which is way bigger. That's why I'm in Dubai. That's why I'm doing much bigger things over here. So, yeah, little, little bit of a rant there. But I think it's so important for you guys to just grasp that. If you want to grow, put, put in and put the effort in and invest. Like, right, sign in to get transit. Let's try it one more time. Sign in with Google. Let's go ahead and see what happens continue let's hope it went okay i have a feeling okay i knew that was gonna happen so let's see what's gonna go on right now if not i can debug this inside of zero to full second that's okay but so your middleware matcher is configured to match this root or page authors card can okay so interesting we don't actually have our middleware is not firing off. That's that's interesting. So 404. Ah, okay. So I think this is because of my middleware is not author is cool, but can't continue. That's weird. That's just something that's a problem with my deployment. That's a very strange issue. What's going on? So many red colors. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's the fun of debugging. Okay, so let's see, clerk. Okay, so this weird thing happened with my clerk, the, uh, my middleware. I have a, I have a belief that it didn't match. Oh my god, I know why. It's because it's not matching the URL. Um, for more details, you can just go to match this real page if you're using your Okay, what we can do though is we can actually try and do something. We do for sell, build. And I think I can do a Vercel run here. Uh, how do I do a Vercel run locally? I think it's just Vercel run build. Either way, we can do a NPM run build and do it that way. So background music was awesome. Thank you so much, dude. 
Maybe Vassell run. Let's try Vassell. Vassell run. Is it Vassell run dev? I don't know. Is it? No, it's not Vassell build. Vassell play, Vassell build. Um, even I'm forgetting now how to run it locally. If someone can check that, it'll help me out a lot. Uh, if we do NPM run build, NPM start maybe from a Vassell build. We do Vassell uh, run locally. Vassell dev on. Okay, so it does want Vassell dev. Vassell dev maybe Vassell build. Vassell run build. No, I know how to do Vassell run build, but it's the Vassell. How do I run the build from that? It's not Vassell dev. Vassell dev. I don't think it is Vassell dev, guys. I'm going to support 3000. Okay, so let me stop my port here. Vassell dev. It's not dev. It's Vassell start. Oh, Vassell start. Is it Vassell start? No, it's not Vassell start. Okay, Vassell dev. Let's try anyway. Vassell oh. dev. Crazy, what's going on? All right, you got dead port. There you go. All right, let's try that out. Let's see. Let's see, translate now. No, so my local host is working with my authentication side of things, it's just my deployment. That's okay. I think, um, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna try to debug this live anyway. Let's give it a go, even off if it doesn't work out, it's fine. Really quick on the make sure. It's all. Okay, so I have a feeling it's it's just a bad deployment to be honest with you because my middleware seems to be okay. My middleware votes uh, process the environment the cell URL forward slash unless it's unless I'm messing up with forward slash translate. Unless it's just translate. I have a feeling it could just be that. I could be doing a stupid mistake here. Let's do something. Let's do console log URL and let's do a home page check on this. Because I have a feeling I'm doing a dumb mistake and it could be easily avoided and this thing can be very easily fixed. So, okay, so it's not. It's definitely for slash translate. Unless for sell URL gives me that. For sell dev. No, okay, that's fine. Um, that's not how you do it. I think Vassell run, Vassell build run locally. How do I, what about Vassell build prod? No, I know you guys are right. You guys are right, but that's not, that's not the way I'm, if you have any webhooks API, then also add the public written API. Yeah, that's fine. But I think the middleware should be also middleware. So middleware, let's check this out. So, uh, next config, I have a feeling it's to do with this okay i'm trying can i deploy a local build up to yourself a cell dev a cell build a cell build prod okay let's try one more time i'm gonna try and do a deployment to be honest with you let's do a, a deployment to production let's do the cell prod um cell dash dash prod can you find the error with f12 so no, because locally reproducing it is not doing what I want. Is the middleware firing at edge or no? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I will I will check that, but I'm not sure I want to check it right now. Let's do um clock middleware. It's also worth mentioning that core 2.0 is in beta, so it could be an issue, fly issue. However, I don't believe that's the thing. All routes are unprotected now and you have to opt in. I think I have the buckles. No, so core 2.0, I believe is the other way now. All routes are protected or not protected. So look, core 2.0, have a look. So I believe it's the other way now. So it's actually, so let's go to do, 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 do. Our middleware now defaults to not protecting any routes. Previously, the opposite going forward, you specify which routes you'd like to protect. You made it from, yeah, so that's what I, that, but firstly, that's actually way better, I believe. Should be the way. Run middleware on index page, but. Mm, so I want all the, all the pages. I'm making a stupid mistake here. And it's my fault. 
Yeah, he's uh, he has the same. He's like uh, climbing away every bunch, protected rather than rich. Don't want to be protected. Okay, these are all the files. So it should it should to be honest with you, it should be here in the file. Um, migrant. Uh, there we go. Also protect. You find some examples. Got some kind of protection. Okay, I mean, let's give it a try anyway because I have a feeling to be honest with you that. Try this out. Sign in. Continue. Boom. Yeah, so there you go. So Google Translate, Google Translate clone app. Done. Oh, my goodness. Okay, one minute. So it happened either way. So firstly, I don't think we need to do that that route that I did second before, because that definitely did not work the way that I expected it to work. Uh, the second thing is the logs. Where are my logs at? Where are my logs at? Deployments. Let's go back to our deployment. Boom, here, uh, this one. And let's check out the logs. And let's pull open. Oh my God, I've lost track of what is what. Let's just get rid of all. Okay, let's see. Time, okay, failed to pass URL. So that is definitely an issue. I think someone's actually tried to access it besides me. Okay, so I've messed up somewhere with the middleware. That's clearly the mistake. Um, if you're using a source directory, I'm, I'm not using source directory, so. I've made a little mistake here around this right now. Typically, I don't do these live kind of streams on a live, but it's okay. I'm down to do it. Um, let's see. So, this is different. We're not using this. We're using the other way now. Exclude files with follow measure. Typically, stuff files exclude files and internals match up. Okay, so. Exclude files and re-including files in API and extension. So I think like I don't think this is the way to do it. I'm just gonna try something quickly. Go to our launch cam. First thing is as well is that I think I should I'm gonna undo my change that I made recently about the URL because that is definitely not the the callback URL is definitely screwed up now. So if I do my local host, we should see that I'll be screwed up as well. So yeah, let's let's do our the local host version to npm run dev. I should have probably tested that. I don't know why I didn't test that. So do local host, boom, check in the after signing clerk for clerk. Yeah, I did, I definitely did. Um, I think that's where um, I need to check now that it's not screwed up. So if I do, yeah, look at that. Oh no, that's okay. Okay, I think after login, remove the duplicate URL now and then check in. Yeah, I did after login. I did try that here, to be honest with you. Translate. Let's try something. I want to I want to check if it works with just this. Because then I have an I have a theory behind this. Okay. It's okay. This is good. But this is what we do in our actual coaching calls, to be honest with you. We actually de debug at this level. But either way, smash that like button if you're enjoying live debugging sessions. If you're enjoying Sunny literally puzzled right now, trying to figure it out, then that's it. This is how we do it. Okay. Do it manually in your pro URL check as well. So I, I did uh, try to go my radar. So yeah, I did try that. It, it. 
to be honest, if I did the cell, okay, I actually have an idea. Let's do npm run build. I want to try doing a production build. Uh, this is that's not gonna the cell build. Maybe we could do a cell build, and then is this gonna populate my build? I think it. Yeah, I think it will actually. Very npm start now. Ah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, there you go. Now I can see. Go to pass your. There we go. Uh huh. Okay. There we go. Translation history. User. There we go, guys. There we go. Found it. So, translate. So, firstly, I think the URL would have been fine. Secondly, it's from translation history. So, where I did translation history fetch call. Boom. Here. Uh, I don't know, but I mean, the cell URL is not going to be defined right now, is it? That's why. Translation is true. Of course, that's not going to be undefined. Otherwise, it would have been. Okay, but let's try the cell build. And then. So this will build it with my Vassell build cache now. So if you do npm uh, run st npm start, sorry. I don't know if that's going to use my. Invalid URL. So undefined URL. Okay. So one thing I want to try is actually this. So. I want to try and do obviously don't in real life you wouldn't push a prod like this you would just push it to is missing slash it's not missing slash here it's okay just in the it's not something you can solve us with more progress yeah this is the main thing really I think you guys like this part the most honestly it's crazy I think you actually really prefer this part let me know in the comments right now. Put the Vassell URL in the Vassell environment. Yes. Uh-huh. That's a good point, actually. So, but then my Vassell environment file. No, you don't have to. You don't have to put Vassell URL in the Vassell environment file. I mean, we could potentially do it here. Okay, so that's just giving away my keys. <laughs> um, I'm going to hide that for a second. So, okay, so Vassell URL is actually, yes. Okay, so somebody made a good point here, actually. Let's, I'm going to put HTTP yeah. localhost 3000. So inside of my Vassell preview local file in the Vassell, I've actually just forced it into that. So I want to try something now and do a Vassell build here. I also push to production so we can test that out in a second. Um, and while that's doing that, Let's give it a try. So this one, this is going to probably fail again. But now there's a debug, which will ping out the URL, which I'm going to check against. So, boom. Check the logs. So the homepage 42. Let's go to the home page. Yeah, so that URL trick is not working the way that we want it. If we do a forward slash translate. Okay, now if we go to our logs. So the main issue here really is actually the clerk middleware is not being detected. So that is definitely the main consideration here. So Middleware matches is configured to match its root page. So that's my issue, I believe. Clone middleware data is used in your Linux so middleware. Or the deprecated auth middleware. So I don't think I'm using the deprecated auth middleware. Middleware, do, 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 take middleware. So 
So... I think it should be matched to be against the translator, to be honest. But what I may do is actually just do. I have a feeling this also could be because I'm using a beta right now. Also, it's going to be so that's the main issue, really, to be honest with you. But what's strange about this whole thing, guys, is that it is actually picking up the. So if you look at this, right, it's actually pushing. So this still picks up the auth middle route. So that's working. It's this right now. But let's check my log. I should have a log now. There we go. Google Translate. Go Translate Handshake. Da, da, da. I also uh, info. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so you can see, look at this, that it definitely tries to go and to that endpoint. So, okay, so the endpoint is live. So first things first, that is good. That's very good. So I've actually got my endpoint. So firstly, that's a call sign. So what's my open clock in the chest? So, da, 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 da. So my translations are definitely coming through from my live URL. The issue here is more around. So we're getting through, we're getting through. So first things first is the translation history is definitely work. Correct. This is definitely correct. It's when we're trying to go to. Okay, one more try because I went ahead and added it back into the middle one. If this doesn't work, it's okay. It's fine. I think at that point, what I'm going to do is also I'm going to. Oh my goodness. Wait a second. Maybe it's my your maybe it's my endpoints, guys. Maybe it's the four slash translate four slash transcribe audio. No, but it can't. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Let's try to transcribe. Audio. I don't think it's this though. This is files as well. This doesn't make any sense. Let's do translation history. Let's just try translation history. And then translate. Pinch my audio. And then my actions as well, you know, could be the delete. I mean, the delete, if it doesn't work, it's fine. But let's give that a try. I'm going to give this a little bit, a little, bit, little try now. And if it doesn't work, it's all good. It's all fine. After that, I will solve this issue inside of Zero to Full Stack Hero. But it's been a fun debugging session. <laughs> but otherwise, the main thing is, like, on your locals, it's working and... Um, this is not that difficult of a bug to be honest we can probably fix this fairly straightforward let's give that a try come on let's wait for that to go down What, this is also a really nice representation, by the way, of a community. Like you can see, the main thing is, is in the reality, when you're working like this, it's also roots that can be accessed while signed up. Yeah, but guys, you're looking at the previous. I'm using Core 2.0. So a lot of the suggestions are uh, for Clerk, the standard Clerk. I'm using Clerk 2.0, uh, Core 2.0. So there's now a change in the middleware, which can slightly, which can affect things. Okay, so. Pop this open to the side, guys. And let's pop this open there. Let's go over to or sell. And let's make this live. Okay, so we've got a lot, bunch of requests. Sign in to get translating. Let's sign in. Oh, okay. So first things first. I mean, I don't know if someone else tried to go on there, but 
Okay. Same thing. Okay, so in this case, it's okay. I'm going to basically speak to the guys over at Clark, see if this is maybe... I probably made a slight slip here, to be fair. It's probably a very small issue that we're facing. But I'm going to go ahead and make sure... One second, let's do past 30 minutes. Info. Options. Middleware. 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 Let's do status. Blah, blah, blah. There's a morning. Let's have a look. If I go to now forward slash translate, let's do a live. Boom. Forward slash translate. Play. I hate it when it does that. Forward slash translate. Now we do it. Okay. Let's see what. There we go. Yeah. So it's definitely around that middleware. So I've just messed something up around the middleware to be fair. Uh, but I will definitely get this fixed and either A, I will drop a video on it or B, I will go ahead and explain this inside Zero to Full Stack Hero. So if you want to know the answer to this one, I will be giving it out inside of Zero to Full Stack Hero because I am super curious myself. But the interesting part is it still deployed the endpoint. So this is really down to middleware issue. Very small, I can imagine, very easily fixable. Um... But I would definitely consider making a video on that as well. So you guys can feel free to yeah, figure that one out. But okay, in the end of the day, the main thing is the build is absolutely sick and it works. All right, so let me go ahead and deploy the VMRAM dev. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up with the way we know how to do it. The only way we know how to do it. That was a deep dive, guys. That was a proper deep dive. Okay. Now let's see if I can actually go to even this page. Yeah, so this one is definitely connecting to MongoDB. There we go. Nice. All right. Cool. We're back. So hello world. Let's see if it does. And douche. Okay, nice. All right. Plus, one thing I would always recommend is that, yes, you definitely sort this deployment issue out, but always get a recorded video of your app and demo. Explain the breakdown of the tech that you're using inside the stack and all that good stuff. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and break down all of the tech that you learned in today's build. And then I'm going to wrap up the way that we know how to do it. So today, guys, we absolutely crushed it with today's build. We've got Next.js 14 down. We use Microsoft Azure. We use so many different services, including the Azure OpenAI service, where we use the Whisper model. We use Azure your AI translator to go ahead and do the text speech recognition. No, sorry, we to do the transcription. So to go ahead and translate the text, we've got the web speech API. We've got, you know, the media stream recording API to go ahead and do this cool stuff where it goes, yo, what's going on guys? So all of that is going ahead and doing it right now. Absolutely awesome stuff. We've got server actions working. We've got revalidate tags, you know, caching mechanisms and how it all works. We've got Tailwind CSS and TypeScript alongside ShadCN to get this beautiful UI. Really, really nice stuff. And we've got Clerk Authentication with middleware, the whole shebang, everything working in a really, really nice flow. And the most importantly, you know, something that I don't typically do on a lot of these builds lately is MongoDB. So I even went ahead and showed you guys how to go ahead and, you know, use something like MongoDB in today's build. So you can go ahead and actually have a database like this where you can go actually. And this is really useful because you can end up actually replicating production databases locally, working offline, things like that. It can go a very, very long way in the world in the world of development and it's just a good thing to know about especially this right now i really did find that this extension was absolutely phenomenal to my development for this build and i think you guys are going to benefit massively from it as well so if you're watching the replay of this right now enjoy the entire build and like i mentioned before guys the whole code is available in the first link in the description simply fill in the details in that form if it asks for your company just pop your name in and then go ahead and get the code for absolutely free over here in the github repo right so the first link gets you the github repo the second link takes you over to zero to full stack hero and the uh, sorry the third link takes you over to zero to full stack hero in the description but this second link takes you to our course and if you in the video description the second link will take you to clerk right so if you go ahead and hit that link when you're signing up for clerk it goes ahead and shows them that 
that you came from this video, which always goes such a long way in the grand scheme of helping us work with bigger and also more brands. So guys, remember guys, this really was a massive build. I want everyone to go ahead and build it yourself because I think it's going to teach you so many core fundamentals and you're going to learn a ton in the process. I promise you that. But otherwise, guys, it's been your boy, Sunny, aka Papa React. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned because I actually have a build covering all of the popular AI, AI services coming out this week. And if you're enjoying the vlogs, let me know by dropping comments and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, guys, the boy Sunny, a.k.a. Papa Red. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.